streets with diamonds in our eyes Out with the vampires under a midnight sky My mind so hypnotized It was exciting It was the 90s
Hello, hello, hello. We are here. It is time. The best screen grabs in the game right here. You know what I'm saying? It does not stop. Look at this one. Look at this beauty. Found by the one, the only. <laughs> Rambo Bambo McGee in the house here. But I'm not alone. I got the one, the only. The Atlas, the bookkeeper in the house. How you feeling, my friend? I'm feeling uh, great. I'm feeling great. Can you please rate this screen grab 1 to 10? Go ahead. Come on, be honest. Uh, uh, I give it a, <laughs> I give it a seven and a half. Okay. It's pretty good. I, it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll take that. Big ups to pasta making for the gift bomb, dude. Your legend. Uh, let's get to it. Before we get to the fun, that is ask the king. I got some you new understand? cards to show you, my friends. New cards. We always love to see new cards. Some of these made by me, some not. Well, most of them are by me. One's not. Uh, first up on the docket today, we have. A few people. These are all real people I felt had to be added, right? So first we got Mega64. We did the episode about Mega64 this week. The Sultans of Satire. Uh, they literally had a video that was all made for satire, and Phil didn't know it was satire and said uh, these guys were just being stupid on camera, even though that's kind of their shtick. So there we go. Mega64 hmm. card in the house. Sultans of Satire. Next up, we have Total Biscuit. Rest in peace, Total Biscuit. Uh, for his uh, Lifetime Achievement Award by calling DSP the jester of the internet. He definitely deserves a spot here. Total Biscuit. Big ups to you. Uh, next ups. up is uh, Pro Jared. I felt Pro Jared needed one, right? Uh, he does have a spot in this. He's on the iceberg. And I feel he should be here. So uh, he's there. That's the famous tweet as well that caused the rift with DSP all those many moons ago now. Uh, seven years ago now, if you can believe it. I took a wrong turn on the internet. Ended up reading DSP hilarity. Ha ha, whoops. And uh, you remember what DSP did with that, I'm sure, Atlas. Remember when uh, Jared oh, went yeah, through he, his little thing? He took a victory yeah, he, lap. He held yeah. that grudge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He remembered he never it. never forgets. <laughs> <laughs> we got... Right. Thank you. For uh, we do have a membership. we do have a Spencer that. card, Kuro. Kuro's asking about Spencer. He does have a we do have a Spencer card. Don't worry about that. Spencer's in the pool already. Available to pool. Next up, uh, much requested, much requested card. He had to be here. We don't know if he's a villain or a uh, a hero yet. I guess, but he's a big enough name now that we needed to have him. And uh, that person is Mike Klum, current friend, future enemy, Mike Klum in the house here, available for pulling right now. Uh, what's your current take on this uh, documentary? I don't think we ever talked about that because, you know, we always talk about we're, we're stuck in like 2010, 2011 on this show. But what is Atlas? I'd rather be the, there. <laughs> yeah, what is Atlas <laughs> the bookkeeper's thoughts on how this documentary can turn out? Um, well, how it could turn out? I, it, uh, man, that's rough. Um, <laughs> I just I think no matter what happens in it, DSP is going to make himself look a fool, whether he gets his positive spin that he thinks that he's going to get or Mike Klum actually makes an accurate, you know, documentary. Yes. Uh, either way, I don't think it's going to make DSP look as good as he thinks it will. And I'm yeah. going to laugh regardless. Yeah, that's kind of that's pretty much me, too. I think it's going to be good for us no matter what, no matter what angle they take. It's going to be good for us. But obviously, we want them to show the truth. You know, the rare thing I agree with Re Review Tech was I just want a true one. I don't want it to. Show all the facts. That's all we need, right? Just show all the facts, and then we're happy. Uh, but that last one for the day here, this was not submitted by me. Uh, you know, Kat, of the big cat reveal, uh, Atlas, I know you you uh, know all <clears throat> about that. Uh, but she loves metal, she said, right? She loves metal. Uh, so someone, she did. <laughs> someone decided to make a Bega Death card in response to that. So <laughs> Bega Death 13 credit cards. And this is from Gaudi Enemy Number 1. <laughs> so big ups for that. The Bega Death card. This is a very high quality card here. Look at the artwork on this. This is nice. So big I actually ups. really like it. Yeah. yeah good luck for, to getting that one, my friends. They're all in the pool today. Today, today. So today, my friends, we're going to do one episode, only one episode today, but that's because it's a super size one because it's literally longer than an hour itself. So we're just going to do one episode today. Uh, I don't, I can't handle two of that. Two hour, two ep And then the next episode is also super long. So I was like, yeah, I'm not doing two super long episodes in one night. So we're going to go to one. We're going to have a lot of fun. Let's get into it now. Ask the King, April 21st, 2011. Uh, and this was, I believe, about a month after the one we did. Oh, excuse me, not a month. month uh, not too long after the one, less than a month since the last one we did. So what uh, what amazing questions could we get in that time? We're going to find out together. All right? So this is um, 
Jasper the Cat says, Mike will get some hot cat clum out of me. Thank you for that. Uh, Jasper Yuck. the Cat. <laughs> get help, Yuck. Jasper. Get help. All right, let's go. Ask the King, episode 11, uh, April 21st, 2011. Let's go. Lay motherfucker. Love it. Gotta have it. Got to. <laughs> wonder where that ends. What is going on, everyone? The SP oh, the classic. Here. Welcome uh-huh. to this week's, well, this kind of, it's, it's been delayed a week, but uh, this what? today's episode of Ask the King. Uh, I am out. DSP. Today is April 21st, 2011. And let me tell you, we have some very, very, very good questions this uh. time. I'm very pleased. Uh, actually, I had a <laughs> Always very worried. long time. Oh, he yeah. Says it's good. Yeah, reminder, this is the week after we got the, the dress down, remember? Remember he got this the full talking to? Remember oh, last time yeah, you were on? Yeah. Yeah, you this... guys need better <laughs> questions. All of these are shit. Uh-huh. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> so apparently the uh, Den stepped up this time. I'm choosing which questions Hi. I wanted to answer, and I honestly get the feeling I picked too many. Oh, Some that's of these a flash. are really I'll good in-depth that. questions. Uh, so let's get right into it uh, to try to, <clears throat> for time constraint <clears throat> reasons. Anyway, first question. All right. Hi, Phil. I'm new to fighting games, and I picked up Marvel 3 as my first fighting oh, game. Oh, God, fighting games. I'm game. actually trying to learn. Immediately uh, with know, the fighting games. Shut the fuck up, fighting games. Uh, I noticed there seems to be major differences from Marvel 3 to other fighters. In Marvel Huge. 3, it seems like if you can land one or two hits, then you can actually land a massive combo that ends up killing a character Star without the other player not really able to be able to do anything about it. Uh, however, in other games I've seen, such as Mortal oh, Kombat and Super too. Street Fighter, you can't do these 50 to 100 hit combos, only up to about 5 hits, and the counter maneuvers are available such as combo breakers. What do you think about this difference in fighting style? Do you think that one style... How did this not get a super wide? long disclaimer? This, like, this is uh, a long question, guys. Do five, one, fucking two, nine, two. Hold on one second, because... Yeah. Oh, okay. was blocking part of my lamp. I was like, why is it so dark? And I realized the whole bulb was being blocked. Um, Big up's lamp. Well, great just question. Just start the video over. Uh, you just started, just do it again. Is, <laughs> Mar- the Marvel series of games, ever since way back, X-Men vs. Street Fighter, it's always been oh multiple God. characters on a team. Now, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 and 3, you end up with three characters on a team. And Amazing. I think what the mentality is when they make these games mm-hmm. is that the there's three characters rather than one. So what we'll do is we'll make it uh, easier to do longer combos to do more damage because it's going to take uh, a longer time to kill off those people because it's three characters versus, say, Mortal <laughs> Kombat. He okay. did the thing. He did the thing where he checks. This is a classic. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> he checks how many fingers he has. So he's like, am I actually showing the right number? Let me pause the right time. Uh, a longer time to kill off those people because it's three kids. Look, there it is. He has to check You got to make sure. You got to make sure. Sometimes you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not typically, thing, but... <laughs> yeah, if it's a one-time thing, all right, that's fine. But he always, always checks. It's like, come on. <laughs> Such a weird thing. But there you go. Three-prong plan, three characters. Characters versus, say, Mortal Kombat versus oh, yeah. one-on-one. I wish um, you would have turned it around, too. Yeah. That's, that's my <laughs> favorite. It's just one-on-one. It would be very, very hard to come back if, if someone just hit one hit and they could kill you and that's the end of the whole round, as opposed to... These Marvel games, uh, since you have three characters, if they just kill one character, it doesn't necessarily mean that you know they're going to go ahead and kill the next two characters. Okay. Okay. Um, now, in particular with Marvel Three, I do have a comment to make. And it's, oh, this, great! It's, this is it. In I'm Marvel excited. Capcom <laughs> Two. I have a comment to make, and this is it. Yes, it was very possible to land a combo that you know was one hit that took uh, led to a hundred percent combo. Some of these were infinite combos. I wonder if, okay, this is so stupid, but let's see the snort sacks are definitely in play today. You know what I'm saying? That right side especially. Oh, I'm like, seeing it, in it? It seemed like people didn't talk about the snort sacks, though, until recently when the, like, high definition came in. But, like, it's definitely here. I mean, look at that. Yeah. You know yeah. What I'm he. It, I feel like there's a lot of things that didn't get pointed out about DSP <laughs> until, like, much later. Yeah. But kind of were always around. <laughs> uh, some of these were combos where you would... Start the combo, do a super move, and then DHC, which is called dual. No, I can't cancel. stop looking at him. So uh, thanks. I'm just staring at it. <laughs> the okay. Um, the thing is, oh, and this is what go. most competitive uh, players are saying right now who've been playing Marvel Marvel Three. Are they? This is In what they're Marvel saying. 2, mm-hmm. you Everybody needed to be very good at the game to do it. This is what the okay? SRK is saying, um, by the way, or at least to get to the proper setup to do it. In most cases, don't get me wrong. There were a couple things that were really easy to do. But for the most part, to do those kind of combos in Marvel 2, you had to put a significant amount of time into your gameplay, 
to do those kind of things, and you really need to understand the mm -hmm. game and get really good at it, have great hand-eye coordination, put in a lot of time for execution mm -hmm. practice and things like that. Mm -hmm. In Marvel 3, the game is like made being good at a game. Easy, mm -hmm. Meaning it's very dumbed down. It's Ooh. very easy to do these extended okay. combos can play. that do massive damage and have high potential Shout out all my uh, wheelchair combo. individuals. The reason this was done, and I've talked about this before, because the okay. same exact thing happened with Street Fighter 4. Capcom is trying to sell their fighting games to a wider audience than ever before. They don't just want to sell it to this one small, tightly knit group of competitive players. They want thousands of people across the country oh, to play these they? games and attempt to play them on a competitive level. So what they've done is they've made it extremely easy for Joe okay. Schmo, who's never played a fighting game before, Schmo. to sit down I was and just about to say. with not as much time practicing He's my favorite DSP viewer. Yeah, I'm sure there's a the the LARPer name already be used for that one. Okay. So the bottom line is this, if hey. you are looking to get into fighting games okay. these days, whether it's Street Fighter 4, whether, whether it's Marvel 3, this is your chance because it's easier than ever to yep. learn the top tier strategies, the extended combos, and the things that you need I'm to do so to done with this question. Really I was done when we started. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> for like me, and I've talked about this before in the past, I think it's a double Eventually they stop. It it's a lot just, of new people into the community. <laughs> I think it dumbs down the quality of the games. Uh, I think it how many times do we say dumb down? who put time and effort into previous fighting uh, games. In 2011, I feel like that was really a lot, there was a lot of talk around as that. As much time mm. or effort in, uh, as was needed previously, can excel at these games and do these 100% oh. combos to people. So that's, that's my amazing. feeling on it. Um, what you'll find is that there really is a community consensus right now that Marvel 3 mm -hmm. uh, is too easy of a game. And because of that, some people are actually thinking that it might not have as long of a, a tournament presence as Marvel vs. Capcom 2 did. A lot of people are already writing it off, a lot of which people. I think is a little premature. But uh, it is what it is, and that's the situation. Okay, um, I think I was it is what it is. Do I Very like any cool. style better than the other? Oh, Obviously, God. for me, I would say I like the older oh, style of putting more. <laughs> Was that even part of the question? I don't remember. <laughs> like, okay, that's just one question. Time, uh, you put in the effort, <laughs> I'm not counting it you again. Went across the country during Shut tournaments up. and learned different playing styles and strategies, and because of that, you're able to succeed. As uh -huh. opposed to today, where it seems to be like find one team. Or find one character that has an insanely good combo, does a lot of damage, do the same repetitive shit in every match that you play, mm, and simply okay. because Practice. the game's been made so easy to play, you win every time. Oh, there you go. That's cope That's why he loses that game. Right now. I don't really yep. like that in particular, but uh, what a, okay. it's, again, it's, it's really early. The game's only been out for, what, three months? Not even February to March, March to April. And some of April, so we're talking two and a I'm half confused months. as really to what he wants. Really I don't know. Yet. He wants elite only. He wants only high. Qu yeah, what's his perfect fighting game look like? You know what I'm saying? Like, how is it like 40 buttons to do a combo or what? Like, is it 40 buttons to do a move? Is that what he wants? And he's saying like, oh, you 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 do the same thing. You find the really good team, then you do the same thing over and over again, and you win your games. Like, isn't that like every game if you practice and get good? Like, you find your bread and butter weapons and load out like in a Call of Duty game, and then you run the map the same way every single time, and you yeah. learn the spawns. Like, yeah, that's being good at a game, dude. That's <laughs> it. Yeah, he wants it to be randomized. Just every time you get randomized everything. So, oh, who's the new character is all randomized, dude, I guess. But he's bitch about that. He doesn't know what he wants. He doesn't want anything. All right, next yeah. question. Yeah, what exactly. Do you think the gaming industry? Do you Ooh. think it's panicking because the Western gaming industry is outstripping them? No. Uh, years ago, the Western gaming industry <laughs> Outstripping? Was what? 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 Okay, so... I, okay, by the way, I'm sure he's going to shit on Japan game make. I'm sure, oh yeah, they definitely are shitting themselves. For the Japanese. 100%. Yeah. Classics like Zelda and Mario, inventing the survival horror genre with Resident Evil and Silent Hill. Whoa. However, when the Western market exploded... <clears throat> And now looking at the current situation, it's obvious that Japanese developers are somewhat panicked. Look at the camera. Take Dead Space, camera. for example, a game that was a great survival game and did not come Oh my god. Game. And then take a look at Resident Evil 5. In my opinion, Capcom tried too hard to be a, a, a Western game. Mm -hmm, uh, definitely. And then take a, game, uh, uh, take a look at Lost Planet 2 where the same seemed to happen there. Yeah. It seems like they're trying to pitch their stuff to the Western industry to get a piece of the cake, but they're failing. It seems Yo, people no love Resi 5, what? And they're I know, I don't traditionally know what oriented recording their own games to make them more appealing to the Western market. So that's Vassal. So I guess he wants to know what's my opinion on the Japanese gaming market. Uh, there's a really good article in the latest you guess? issue. You guess? You the question. <laughs> yeah, he's like, he, he, does the, he gives himself the cat treatment. He, like, dumbs it down. He's like, okay, so let me... Uh, he want to know Here's my take on the Japanese this. game. Yeah. Informer from May 2011 on this subject. <laughs> And the dumb bottom line bitch. is yes. <laughs> what a dumb bitch. We got Kid Flam in the house. Legend. 
He says, how normal is it for an American guy to have a cowboy hat? Is it kind of reserved for kings and stuff? I mean, to walk around with one, unless you're, if you're making that like style choice, it's not like that crazy. But like where I live, I never see him. I mean, I, I guess I never look for him though either. How is it where you are, Atlas? Don't dox yourself. But are, if you're, I, are you in a big city or what? Where you were kind of area are you? I'm, in? I'm in a I'm in a uh, medium sized city. I okay. did just go to the Western store the other day and tried on a cowboy hat. It was oh. too expensive for my taste, but I thought <laughs> I looked decent in it. I'm not gonna lie. Okay. <laughs> So, but do you see them on the street ever? No. Okay. No. <laughs> I can't say I do either. <laughs> but maybe, has it has it over there across the pond, Kid Flim? Are, are cowboy hats ever around? Oh, it's common in Texas. Oh, yeah. I guess that makes sense. <laughs> How about in Connecticut? <laughs> it's absolutely true. Here's what it was really back in the day. Oh, uh, here. oh God, look at this. How far deep are we? Uh, at least the first knuckle, first which knuck. is pretty deep, dude. Okay, Jesus. Look, I'm, I'm gonna ask everyone to do this with me. Get your pinky and look where your first knuckle is. Now he's past the first knuck. He's into the. He's 1.5 knuck in. <laughs> That's pretty Good fucking Lord. deep, dude. Look at that. <laughs> oh, hey, sometimes you gotta dig deep. Get this. in there. They oh, were doing he's the twist. Second knuck with the twist. <laughs> You spin me right round, <laughs> baby, right round. Do the first knuckle right round, right round. <laughs> oh, my God. Look at this. Absolutely true. So natural. Here's what, what, like, not even a second thought, just deep. It was really back in the day. Uh, Boom. You know, when video games oh were going from... <laughs> that's that's, that's <laughs> farming, right? Look, he's like, holy shit. <laughs> I just clear something out. <laughs> I'm just, waiting for the look. <laughs> yeah. When you go that deep, you gotta look. I struck gold, boys. Let me find out what I got. From this, you know, bits and bloops uh, era of Atari and the oh, bips and bloops. I love the bits and bloops. Oh, Lem with the with the Vince. I just added that, by the way. I added a few more uh, real wrestlers to the card. So apologies, but I, I think they have to be some because we got to remember the goal here. This what. The real wrestlers is literally what Phil is after. Like, all my cards are kind of fun. <laughs> but I need to remind everyone, like, really, it's just after wrestlers. So I added a few more normal wrestlers to the to the list as well. Video games were going from this, you know, bits and bloops era of Atari <laughs> and the arcade. Oh, yeah. like, that old classic blips and bloops era. <laughs> and stuff like that. And they were moving into a home console. As a not old uh, style, they yeah. were kind of blipping and blooping. I'm not going to lie to but you. But no one ever, no one in their life has called it the blips and bloops era. That's like the dented name. <laughs> That's the dented way Which to say it. The NES. That yeah. Was really taken seriously. Oh, yeah. Japan seriously, dude. was the leader. They were very uh, innovative. They had these creative thoughts. They created these amazing <laughs> concepts creative for thoughts. games. Imagine. And what's ended up happening is <clears throat> they really I don't have creative the thoughts. <laughs> Holy the guy. Probably until the year 2000. <laughs> and then in the year 2000, uh -oh, what some of these executive bigwigs sat down and said, gee, this really is becoming a booming industry to the point where some of these games are so popular they're making as much money as movies. Whoa. But when you look at the development budgets for these games, they're nowhere near as high as the movie industry. You know, it takes $20 million to make a movie. Well, it takes I feel. maybe $1 million to make an exceptional game. But the game's making just as much profit as the movie, so it, this is a no-brainer. <laughs> and so what ended up happening was a lot of Western X. companies, including Microsoft, uh, ended up funding these large-scale projects i'm confused why microsoft got successful. the so microsoft treatment I, the ones that the, oh the bad treat yeah like, i don't know what, what yeah these large-scale projects 2011 we're at the 360 up, we are yeah. that's golden age microsoft you gaming come on yeah, it's now weird to hate microsoft now very successful some of the ones that that come to mind that were the most successful were the call of duty series obviously um okay. years of war halo um and then, subsequently, as those games became more popular, even more third-party studios said, gee, now's the time. <laughs> EA started getting involved with a lot of this stuff and financing a lot of this stuff and buying up gaming studios. So, this is a pattern. This really is a pattern. America sees where the money is, and once they've determined that it's a profitable venture, then they go hardcore into it. <laughs> that's, that's purely an American idea, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, making money. Only Americans do that. Sorry, everybody else. Get fucked, rest of the world. Very much an American no, thing. See money? No currency after. for you. Yeah. You know, and sometimes, it, you know, it started with movies. It goes into other technology. And now here we are with uh, video games. 
Yeah. And Japan, unfortunately, they uh -oh. kind of became... Dude, what's in this ear? Now we're going four-finger. You need a little more... Oh, God! How deep are we there? Dude, what is going on? <laughs> how deep we're is this We're at least a knuck deep again. Yeah, the knuck is in. That's the knuck. And how much more insert do we get? I mean, are we just never taking a shower? I mean, at some point, we have to assume that. If you're digging this much. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, what's the question? I don't fucking know. <laughs> Bentley. Uh, Japan. <laughs> Japan, uh... yeah. Why does Japan <laughs> suck? <laughs> that's, I think that's basically no it. Games. And Japan, unfortunately, they kind of became... Dude! I don't know how to say I guess complacent would be the word. We're three deep in this question. Where they really settled into what they were doing, their own... He's trying to pick thinking, his brain. They oh, really yeah, exactly. The box. They didn't expand their models for what they were doing with these video games. And I guess... <clears throat> A good example of what's going on would be the, the game that just came out, Yakuza 4. And a lot of people ask me, why didn't I play Yakuza 4? A lot 4? of people. Well, it's probably because it's a very Japanese-centric game. Really finds oh. a, a hard a hard place to fit into a Western audience. It's very <laughs> Does similar. It? A hard place to fit into a Western audience. I, I mean, he's just saying words. What does that mean? It's a hard place to fit in a Western audience? All right. Yeah, okay. it's kind of a word salad. I'm, I'm <laughs> interested... The way that he's talking about Yakuza now, like then, as you know, he does now, because he uh -huh. loves it now. Everybody oh, loves, loves it, it yeah. now. Hell yeah! It's similar to other, similar to other games. Know, we know his, we know his wife loves it. A hard it. place to fit into a Western audience. Okay, it's very similar to other game models of that sort, including previous Yakuza. Yakuza, some people compare it to the Grand Theft Auto series. Yakuza? And if you look at it's game reviews, like, I've read the reviews, they basically said this game is like a Grand Theft Auto that's. Way more linear, meaning there's uh -huh. not a lot of stuff to do. You could free roam, but there's nothing really to do while you free roam, so there would be no reason for you to do it. And looking at the other games that had come out, looking at the other opportunities I had, like doing another fan appreciation week, oh, and looking at the, the whole emphasis of the game, and realizing that probably a lot of Western people watching that game wouldn't uh, associate with it or really relate to it, I skipped <laughs> it. And uh, I get the You wouldn't relate to it or associate with it. We're talking about a video game. Uh huh. We wouldn't relate to it or associate with. I think it. That's what a lot of people in America and other, you know, countries are doing. Imagine so, if you, you know, had to relate or associate with every game uh -huh. that you played. You can't just play a game for fun. You gotta like relate to the character. <laughs> like I, medieval games, it. completely off the table because I I wasn't around, dude. I don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, me either. I can't, either, by the way. I can't that, pretend. Before someone says that joke, this me game either. is too Japanese focused. <laughs> you can quit lying, it's ALT. It's, it's okay. Or on the Japanese culture, or this old design of Japanese games and we just don't like that anymore. We're looking for more in our games and they pass. So it's funny because those kind of games in Japan seem to be extremely popular, but that's one country. So if they're okay with just being popular in their own home country, for example, Final Fantasy 13. Now actually that's another question that we're going to get to. And Optical. actually if I can find it, we might oh, yeah. as well go ahead and answer it right now because it ties in with might this Might as well, question. right? Dude, this what a This question genius. was basically when Final five. Fantasy 13 were, was released, there were good reviews and praises in a lot of media. But actually, in the U.S., it didn't sell as high as they thought it would. Do you think that that's because it was a it 13 is? in the title? And that was from Narrow Minded 17. What? No, Narrow Minded 17. I don't think I... It's the, okay, I just want to make sure I understand the question. It didn't sell because 13 was in the title? Is that, as in... As in, wait, as in the... the, the it, it's like, that's too high a number, so people don't like that? Is that what we're asking that's, here? I... I, I... As dented as it sounds, I I can see that if you don't know anything about Final Fantasy, new one's coming out, and it says 13, and you go, there's 13 of these things? I'm not jumping in now. Come on, yeah. I'm not... Uh, so it's unlucky? It I does sound saying unlucky. dented, though. It, oh, dude, if it's about being unlucky, that is that is the most dented question we've had yet. Oh, that's, that's so about. stupid. I didn't even <laughs> think about that. Oh, God, I hope that's not it. Anything to do with the title Why? whatsoever, I think the name Final Fantasy is synonymous with a good role-playing game. What I think happened is, again, they've taken this this model and they ran with it. And yeah, they did refine the combat engine in Final Fantasy XIII, but look at what the primary aspects of the game were. A quirky plot that a lot of people in the Western audience didn't really understand or associate themselves with. Especially quirky the characters. Plot. A lot of people said, I don't get any of these characters. They don't seem like anyone that I know or any kind of a an archetype of a, of a hero or a person that I would know. I don't associate with these characters, and therefore... I really oh, just like by the way, I'm just, I am just opened up the um, fucking Wikipedia page for Final Fantasy XIII just because I want to see the actual truth of it. 
Uh, and uh, Final Fantasy 13 sold a million units on its first day in Japan. In America, it sold more than a million units. It's release month. Uh, in March 2010, it was the fastest selling title in the franchise's history. Uh, in April of the same year, American game sales for the PlayStation 3 and Xbox recent estimated 800,000 and 500,000 uh, respectively. Also, in that video we watched, uh, we watched this how you don't play for that on Tuesday, and Phil said no games, no girls are playing this game anyway. Uh, actually, a third of the of the player base was female, <laughs> which was extremely high for a Final Fantasy game. Uh, positive reviews. I'm trying to see like the like sum up of how they felt about the sales. I'm sure you guys in chat know better, but uh, clearly it sounds Final like it did Fantasy pretty well. Yeah, Final Fantasy 13 clearly had an audience, and they kept they love Lightning so much they did like spinoffs for. Her, so again, whatever he's saying, I don't know. Like the story. Yeah, this is Derek. Then, Sorry for the Derek segment. <laughs> what you got happens in the game? They forced you into this grind based system, grind -based. which most people in the Western audiences don't like. They don't uh, like because just you don't like it. That means no one does, right? Grinding so that they can keep playing the game. Yeah, dude, people they don't hate like grinding. Extremely high. That's why they do it all day jumps, long, every day. Uh -huh. Which is yep. exactly what happened at the second half of that game. So, if Japan keeps going by these models, I don't think the, the games are going to be popular in Western audiences. Uh -huh. um, yep, they're going to suck. Games that have found popular. themselves to be more popular, games that are easy to jump into, easy to learn, easy, but they do easy. have a difficulty curve. Once you enjoy what you're doing in the game, so a, a game like that would be the first Mass Effect, where it was easy to jump into, but actually your first playthrough had some very difficult parts, but if you loved the gaming engine, you loved the narrative, you loved the characters, everything you associate with that, uh, and then having some revolutionary things in the gameplay as well, like these branching conversation arcs that can determine the ending of the game, change the ending of the game, mm -hmm. things like that. Works. That's really where games are going right now. And that's why Japan is struggling. They're not finding enough innovation. They're not finding enough things. They're just staying within their okay. model of a but this motherfucker, I feel like we lost yeah. the plot, man. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker, when they try to innovate with anything like the fucking Wii, you call it the dumbest shit of all time. 3DS, dumbest shit of all time. <laughs> what? When they innovate, you call it shit, too. So what are they supposed to do? <laughs> but I don't know what he's answering anymore. Who the fuck knows? Traditional Japanese game, and the games are being are becoming very popular just in Japan, but no one else in the world is really uh -huh. catching up. So yeah. I think that's what's happening. I think that Japan needs to find a way to break outside the box uh -huh. and get out of that, that model and that archetype that they've been stuck in for quite some time. Uh, next question. Wait, they're not, he said they're not having creative thoughts anymore, and then do, went on to say that they're doing something that other people aren't doing, and that's why they're not interested in the game? Yeah, I don't know. I have no clue. Like, I could not sum that question up for you. Like, I could not. I could not <laughs> sum up his answer at all. Like, what's his answer? I don't even know. Like, stop being too Japan-y, I guess? Okay. Trolls and haters to act the way that they do. Oh, well, trolls and haters get a shout out. It's a 2011. Uh, next question. Okay, what do you think question. motivates trolls and haters to act the way that they do other than jealousy? And that's from Torn Reaper. Okay. This is our first. Let's get Atlas's guess on this. What what motivates the trolls and haters besides jealousy? Atlas, what's your guess? <laughs> uh, besides jealousy? Yeah, he um, said besides jealousy specific. <laughs> probably so. just like they have nothing better to do they live in their mom's basement and yeah. they get fun out of tearing somebody else down that's what i'm guessing they, they're so fucked in the head that this is how they have fun no no i would say okay wait i'm gonna be more specific and say when you have nothing going on in your own life you can only have fun tearing others down I think we're going to get that speech. You know what I'm saying? He has that speech about, he's going to say some way they have nothing going on. Like, I guarantee he's going to say that line. Let's see. <laughs> I'll give a very quick answer because oh. there are a lot of factors. All right, so 1328. Let's see if this is a quick answer. Factors. Number one, jealousy is one. Outside of jealousy, a lot of people think, hey, look, here's a guy who's online, and it's not necessarily just me. It could be anyone. And look, I can do something. I can leave a hateful comment, and then people respond. So I get attention. Uh, and attention. giving these people attention, mm, attention. is very attractive to them because maybe they don't get attention. That's fair. Outside of that, or they don't get the right kinds of attention. And so they're just looking for any attention in their life. So, look, I can attention shit on seeking. someone or okay. I can say something really stupid or I can, you know, troll a website. And because I'm doing that, I get attention and you get personal satisfaction out of that. <laughs> and then on the flip side, there's, there are people, I'm sure, who just hate. They really do. They don't like people who are successful just maybe straight up just hate. jealousy maybe they just don't like it that people are successful doing Ooh. different things and so they just really have genuine hate in their hearts 
You know, coming I, from the king of hate. I don't know. I, I, I'm okay. not. Yeah, he, he, he hasn't fleshed out his hatred of trolls yet at this point, I guess. Right? He like doesn't fully understand them yet. I think, or at least in his own mind. Like he's kind of. This is a very middle of the road answer here, kind of. You know, like you know, it's just not what I expected at all. I expected yeah, he hasn't spent more, enough. Yeah, <laughs> he hasn't spent enough uh, sleepless nights just thinking about yeah. all the trolls. Yeah, yet. yeah, he hasn't surmised what's going on. We haven't had years of that practice yet. Yeah, these yeah. people, but I can see those have been some of the factors. Uh -huh. So let's move on. Coming from a person with the website tophaters.com, which was a response to a website called topgamers.com that didn't think he was a top enough gamer to be on there. You created a website called Top Haters in response to that. But yes. Tell us how trolls are just want to hate. Uh -huh. uh, next question. Hey, Phil, there are many comments on your videos, some asking you questions, some giving you tips and criticism, and some actually trolling you. Sometimes I see you actually respond to the comments. My question is how often do you check and read your video comments? And that's from XP Sunny D. Good question. Um, and, you know, the answer, I'll try to make it quick, but basically. <clears throat> okay. Go on quick again. Rapid fire. The video series, try to at least read the comments. On maybe the first video and then some of the other videos and maybe on the last video to see how I'm doing if people enjoyed the game if people really enjoyed what I did during the game um, I cannot read every comment obviously and it's actually a, a tricky thing it's actually a dangerous thing because sometimes you end up sitting there for an hour reading all these comments and you realize fuck I just spent all that time reading comments I have how's that a dangerous thing because you can, like that little self control other stuff I need to do and it can be really addictive to <laughs> just read these comments oh, oh wow it's oh. addictive. <laughs> I don't. That's not a very good thing to be saying, man. A, He's got a really addictive personality. Anything, like, reading anything. comments. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> like reading comments. Come on. Is that that can be addictive? What can't be addictive for this man? Damn. Well, back then they were pretty good. Maybe it was that dopamine hit every time he, he read a good one. He was like, oh, they're loving yeah, me. They're loving that's probably me. It. Yeah. I mean, finally finding validation in his life. I mean, that had to feel pretty good. And that's a good invisible me makes a good point he's making a lot of money at this point uh, making more money than he was so he doesn't give a shit about haters and trolls now he feels no fear right trolls who gives a fuck they don't they can't affect me he's not to the point where trolls have power yet in his mind that's a good point like he now is in total control they, they can't do they can't touch me i'm untouchable yeah the tide hasn't turned uh -huh. yet. yeah i'm just, but yeah that's a good point the criticism and and the uh the advice uh, and also Thank the you. hating and the trolling. Um, mm -hmm. So you have to really be careful with something <laughs> like that. When you become popular on YouTube, you may become like just so focused on the comments that you don't go and actually do anything else. Um, uh -huh. Yeah. And you have to take every comment with a grain of salt. Everyone has their own opinion and they have their own perspective based on their own, uh, you know, experience and where they're coming from. So you know, can't take every comment as gospel truth. So it really is. That's a good question. I say probably. Whenever I put out a new series uh, or a new game, something like that, I try to read a couple comments to see what people think. Mm -hmm. um, for example, yesterday I put out some uh, some series of Mortal Kombat, and I read a couple of the comments on the offline casuals, and I read a couple of the comments on the actual story mode to get some feedback on what people thought. And apparently, people like the game play so far, and they really enjoyed the story mode. They thought the story was really good. So, okay, that's that. Um, All right. Thanks All right, that. that's it. Uh, next question, I basically combined about 40 questions asking the same exact damn thing. Okay. And basically the question is, where's Project 7? Where are the Ooh. new episodes? Oh, wow. Where are okay. these I'm other here. things that we're suggesting you do that would take a lot of video editing? Why aren't you making a lot of this kind of video? Uh, we're going to get, I think he's going to say the simple answer. I thought we might get a bottom line here. Let's see. I think it's going to be, okay, I think it's going to go with here. Uh, I don't have enough time because I'm so busy doing the normal games. I mean, that's the that's the simple answer here. Uh, do you think we're? Yeah, I was else? I was thinking along the same lines. Just yeah. like I'm so busy with other games, like that's not my bread and butter. <laughs> People come here for the the gameplay and hear my takes on them when new games come out. So I have to do those, obviously. But yeah. yeah, that's what I, that's what I'm known for. Yeah. <laughs> the answer is very simple. My computer right now is crapping out. My desktop. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> It comes to the point where I had to reformat it. I installed Windows 7. I previously had Windows Whoa. Vista on there. It's still <laughs> Windows Vista. Good still not Lord. <laughs> very well. And when I, when I say In that... In 2011, still... he was uh -huh. running Vista? <laughs> Hype, dude. Okay. He just, just uploaded, dude. He up, he upgraded to 7. Basic functions for uploading, it's, very, it's fine. But when I do video editing now, for whatever reason, it crashes a lot. Meaning, I'll set up a video, for example, this. This part of Ask the King, I'll set it up for editing. 
and I'll let it run, and it'll say, okay, it's going to take 30 minutes to edit this. What do you? What exactly are you doing for minutes. editing? Like, he, does, he doesn't cut any a fucking thing. We know that. And he put Ask the King on it, and that's literally what we're talking about here? Like, he doesn't cut anything. <laughs> what you, put it up for editing the only, like he's doing something. The only editing that I can think of is, like, when he would do his, like, his year ends or... Um, yeah. Like anything like that, but yeah. Other than that, I have no idea what editing he could even be talking about. <laughs> yeah, the bumper effects. That's the tough part that takes the processing. Time. <laughs> the half screen <laughs> bumper effects. And I come back and there's an error message. Your program has crashed. Oh, like, come on. Fuck. You know. And it seems the more editing that I'm putting into these videos, the the more often it's crashing. It's just completely wasting my time. So at this point, oh, well, this is why we don't edit anymore. I guess. I'm not it's a waste doing anything of time. that's going to involve video editing unless it's something that's already established, like the weekend preview, um, unboxing videos, these videos, Ask the King. These are really the three series that I'm keeping that I'm, I'm editing because I have templates set up oh. and it's not that hard. And you know it is frustrating because Smart Guys, for example, last week uh -oh. people said, well, gee, what took so long to get episode two of Smart Guys up or part two of Smart Guys up? It was because the video editor crashed three fucking times. There's nothing we can do. To get around it, it just do, completely dude. wasted like three hours of our time. So I need to oh, save the project, the good man. News is, uh oh. It looks like uh, you know, at least from everything that I've seen, that I'm going to be able to do this or a more permanent kind of a deal at oh, least yeah. for uh, months to maybe a couple years. It looks like it might be a consistent Ooh, couple of years. years. Form. Yeah, a couple, couple years, years, dude. Two years. Wait. And therefore, I am. He did buy confirm a this is I'm one right of the things that he's editing. This uh -huh. right here. He is editing. This he... one take question, you know, question and answer here. <laughs> but, but he has is templates. Editing. He has templates. So <laughs> um, I'm still balancing in my head what I'm going to do. It's either going to be a Mac desktop, a Mac laptop, or maybe a really high end desktop PC. What? Windows base. Um, Just so basically every option possible there. What? What? what, what? Yeah, I it's, it's going to be everything but <laughs> Linux. Okay, uh, yeah, not Linux. All right, cool. It's going to be a Mac laptop, a Mac PC, or a high-end Windows PC. Okay, well, what else do you have? And I'm on, I'm, I'm weighing things in my head of what I want. God, to I do. would pay for a, a DSP <laughs> Linux stream. <laughs> yeah. and he said, "Phil, don't buy a pre-built desktop. Make your own." And to that, I'm saying, "Absolutely not. I will never do that again." Uh oh, are we gonna get some? Uh, I used to make p p PCs back in the day. I used to do that. Yeah, yeah. I did that all the time. In fact, I, used to I did that all the time. This is one of those things that he did it literally once, but we do it all the time. Can't change out a fan though. I used to actually have a hobby where I built high-end desktop computers for gaming and here it things. is and after spending three thousand dollars on one laptop it was extremely high-end it was running at the time it was running the latest episode of unreal tournament <laughs> at like the highest Epis settings and it looked okay. amazing one little power outage and the fucking thing completely fried and after that i said it is not worth what? it Okay, hold on. This is 2011. $3,000 for a laptop is, is like, insane, isn't it? What is yeah, that? Yeah, that's insane no money. And yeah. 3000 uh, 3, 2011, that's, that's buku dollars. <laughs> Man's insane. And one little power outage and boop, it's done. What? <laughs> what? Tournament at, like, the highest settings. And it looked Definitely amazing. got upcharged so, some oh, sort God, of, like, yeah. specialty. Uh-huh. It was probably one of his Best Buy, like, you know, uh, Best Buy, like, co-workers to get, like, their, like, commissions up, you know? Like, Phil, you got to try this one, dude. It's bait for games, dude. You know? like skip. I wasn't going to name drop Alienware, but I'm seeing it in the chat, so I will. Yeah, it was <laughs> yeah. probably an Alienware. Oh, yeah, you know, because they're, like, made for gamers, you know? He would eat that shit yeah. up. Dude, this one's made for gamers, man. I got to get this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One little power outage, and the fucking thing completely fried. Uh, I see D Danny DADK. Are we going to restream on Wednesday again with Piece of Peace? Not with Piece of Peace. I don't think we didn't talk about it. But if if Cat's coming back, I don't know. I don't. I, I feel like I have to do that, though. I can't, I can't not stream. That is your girl. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's kind of like on brand, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's going to get dumb at some point. Like, it's already dumb. We already know our personality is just not there. But we'll talk about it Wednesday. We're here today. Let's live in the now. We're listening to about a $3,000 laptop right now. L live in the now in 2011. Yeah, Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> One little power outage and the fucking thing completely fried. And after that, I said, it is not worth it for me to contact every single parts manufacturer in this thing to try to get my money. Yeah, so wait, 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 hold on. So we're... we're, we're <laughs> We're explaining why we don't make PCs anymore, and then we bring up the point of buying a pre-built laptop that broke. Is that where we're still at the story? I'm really lost in the story right now. 
That seems to be the summary yeah. to me, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So why we can't make PCs is we bought a laptop for 3000 that broke. All right, we're following along here. Try to argue with the surge protector company who the, 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 the desktop computer was plugged into to try to get the money. <laughs> argue with the surge protector company. I'm just not doing it anymore. It's too <laughs> What do you got? Yeah, send an email, I'm sir. to build your own computer. It takes too much effort. There's God, imagine trying problems. to explain that to them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude, he didn't make a laptop. He said he bought a $3,000 P-built. Josh definitely said that, right? I'll make sure I didn't hear that incorrectly. He said he bought I feel the like he said he built the laptop. Okay, let me, I, let me see I that I was going to call that out earlier. Yeah. How's he buying a laptop? How, how you... Hold on, let's make sure we get that. I'll, I'll fast forward again. Now, I will, and I'm, on, I'm, I'm weighing things ahead of what I want to do. Yeah, yeah. I want to make sure we a get the facts here. A lot of people contacted me and said, Phil, don't buy a pre-built desktop. Yeah. Make your own. And to that, I'm saying, absolutely not. I will never do that again. I used to do that. Uh-huh. I did that all the time. In fact, I used to actually have a hobby where I built high-end desktop computers for gaming and other things. And after spending three thousand dollars on one laptop, it was extremely high-end. It was okay. So don't well, a laptop. Okay, he bet he spent three thousand dollars on a laptop. I guess he put together himself. Okay. Running at the time, it was running. See, the, I, the way he's wording that is so confusing because to me, it could really go either way. He's talking about building PCs, and then he's also talking about he spent three thousand dollars on a laptop. Like you don't really build a laptop typically. So yeah, I would I, think yeah, he bought high, it. That's way more difficult. I, I know you can, but why would you build a laptop if you have a whole fucking thing? It sounds like it's pre-built, you know, but... Yeah, yeah, I would go with that. It's pre-built, but he's just mixing and matching his stories here. I <laughs> yeah, we're just trying to find the anything that makes him look the, like not making a mistake here. That's what. Episode of and I, I feel like when he tells this story later on in in you know history, he retcons it and says it was a desktop that he built. I like. <laughs> I feel. I feel like I remember that. Oh yeah, campathic, camp campathic. I think you're right. That's it. That's it, Atlas. It's the fucking thing mm. where you choose, right? Like, oh, yeah, I want that fan. I want that I want that graphics card. I want that motherboard. That's what he means. <laughs> That's not does. building it, dumb fuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's not building it. That's choose. <laughs> I bet you're right, though. I bet that's absolutely it. Because with Alienware, you could do that shit. I kind of remember that. Oh, 100%. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember going on the sites back then and being like, this is what the gamers use. And I would look at it, and obviously yeah, you still, I couldn't you make afford one. any of that yeah. shit anyway. Like, you make it, though, right? I would, like, make it. Like, all right, yeah, this is what I'll get one day. But you never do. But, like, fuck, it'd be awesome if I had this. <laughs> he built yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I do that on PC Part Picker now as an yeah. adult. So uh -huh. it is what it is. <laughs> never stop, you know? You never can. Tournament at like the highest settings and it looked amazing one little power outage and the fucking thing completely fried mm -hmm. and after that i said it is not worth it for me to contact every single parts <laughs> manufacturer in this thing oh yeah we're calling money. the surge protector it's company not yeah with not fight with them company who the, 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 the desktop computer was plugged into to try to get the money i'm just not doing it anymore mm -hmm. it's too time consuming to build your own computer it takes too much effort there's too many problems <laughs> that come up when you're doing it it's <laughs> not worth it so I am just going to buy a pre-built PC, but I haven't determined what it's going to be yet. Uh, I am kind of leaning at this point towards a Mac, because I think they are the best for video editing, and I think I may buy a Mac for video Oh, yeah, so did he call it a desktop here? Let me make sure. Pre-built PC when you're doing it. Time-consuming to build your own computer. It takes too much effort. There's too many problems that come up when you're doing it. It's not worth it. So, too much effort to contact every station. At like the highest set. Fuck, we're fried. listening like eight times and now. And after that, I said, it is not worth it for me. <laughs> You're all night. Parts manufacturer in this thing to try to get my money. It's not worth it to try to argue with the surge protector company who the, 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 the desktop surge protector. Into to try to get the money. I'm he just didn't say desktop anymore. computer. He just okay. did it. I heard there it. You, yes. Okay. Yeah. So desktop. So, I mean, who knows the story now? It's a pre-built laptop, pre-built desktop. Who knows what the fuck it is? I'm consuming to build your own computer. The story <laughs> sucks, but it's the most interesting question we've had in a while. Uh -huh. It takes too much effort. There's too many problems that come up when you're doing it. Oh, really? It's not worth it. Okay. So, so it sounds like I, you can't do it then, actually. <laughs> right? I mean, it's kind of Yeah, strange. if you're running into problems like this, <laughs> yeah. uh, you, you you shouldn't be doing it. It sounds like, like you're you not can't capable. do it. Yeah, yeah. You clearly haven't done it many times. I am just going to buy a pre-built PC. Yeah, right hell yeah. I don't know what it's going to be yet. Uh, I am kind of leaning at this point towards a Mac mm -hmm. because I think they are the best for video editing. And Most I expensive. I buy a Good Mac point, for video guy. editing, and then maybe somewhere down the line, I'll buy a, oh. a cheaper PC for gaming. The just lip so pick. for yeah. games that people want me to play, I would be able to do it. But 
that's the answer. That's why I'm not putting out anything that takes. A so his answer is, I'm going to buy two it, separate it, desktops. It, awesome. Uh -huh. Great. In particular, the hateful truth would be absolutely impossible for me to do without a computer that can handle. Well, he's big on separating that shit. Like you can't. Like, with his internet lines, you know, with his computers, there has to be, like, each thing has its job, you know? Like, but computers yeah, can, like, I, do everything, but, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I wonder if that goes into him trying to, like, some sort of, like, like uh, legitimize his business in some sort of way, you know? Like, he has a special desktop for work purposes, yeah, you know? Like, yeah. it adds some legitimacy to something that is just not... Yeah, he needs to make it sound more important. That's the goal. That's the only fucking goal. Like, yeah, I got four computers. Like, you don't need to have four computers for this, you know? Like, you just read chat with that one. That could be on the side and you're on. No, 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 that's my chat computer. Come on. And it would continuously crash. <laughs> yeah, he's got his chat, chat laptop, dude. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Big ups to Vikes who says, imagine if he wasn't El Cheapo and bought the warranty for a 3K laptop. Oh, we can't do that. Come on. I mean, I'm surprised, though. Like, he would probably, like... You know when you buy like a lightning cable at Best Buy, they say like you want the warranty? He'd be like, Oh hell yeah. yeah you want the <laughs> you want the five year warranty on yeah, your, on your that, phone yeah. charger? No. Actually, what the <laughs> <laughs> He's too lazy though to like do it though. Like he would like get the warranty but be too lazy to like go through the steps of getting the money back. Like that's what I imagine. <laughs> but he he was talking about uh on your stream when he was talking about Black Friday when he worked at Circuit City or Best Buy and he was talking about the mail-in rebates, he's like, it's not actually a discount because you have to mail the stupid yeah. thing in. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> if you're hurting that bad that you can't wait, you know, a month for a hundred bucks, like, you didn't need it in the first place. Sorry. Uh -huh. Yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> uh, big ups again to, oh, big ups to Brazy Memo Enjoyer. That's a good name. Uh, are we forgetting gaming laptops have batteries? That literally can't even happen. Great point there too, because usually when they run out of power, you'd be your battery would handle it, right? Uh, you know, your battery mm. would still be there. That's a great point, Brazy Memo Enjoyer. I also enjoy her. I have now to do it, so I'm not doing it right now. Um, I, di I didn't. I didn't. I didn't enjoy her video. No. <laughs> well, you know the one. You weren't there. You didn't have a good you, you time. There. You didn't experience oh, it. You I'm glad to... <laughs> I wasn't there. <laughs> She has a rough touch, but sometimes that might be just what you need. <laughs> Real short and sweet, Ghost uh, has a, basically said, "Did I hear that La Noir just got um, just got selected to be featured at the Tribeca Film Festival?" If you don't know what that is, the Tribeca Film Festival is a festival where they feature all kinds of movies, and it's where some of the these movies first get noticed and get attention and win awards. Whoa! <laughs> I say he really did a face face. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, what? Is it this big a deal? Holy shit, awards. All right. It is amazing that a video game is actually going to be at this film yeah. festival. Yeah. This is, in my opinion, the first step of getting video games recognized as a work of art as opposed to just some kind of a diversion. Oh my god. You know, so I hate right this so much, dude. Are held in high regard. <laughs> what Why? Was that? What the fuck was that? Because, you know, movies. Watch after this. Okay, so we go for the eye dig, but then the eyes just go wide for no reason. Watch. Okay. So look. Okay, we're... <laughs> 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 All right, we're digging here. So whatever. You got to dig. But then after the dig... It... Look. Oh, my God. <laughs> Dude. Dude, what's <laughs> going on? <laughs> Yo, he looked away for just a second to scratch his eye, and the corner demon started moving. Yeah. He swore, like, he's terrified. Shit. He's waking up. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Dude, how many frames is this? Dude, this uh, might be fine. one. Of, yeah, that's one of the biggest quarter de corner demons of all time. All right, watch. All right, I'll do real time, all right? Watch this. No, so I'll slow it down, not real time. Let's do half speed on this. It's ear pick, and then that wakes up the corner demon, and we are locked on. All right, here we go. Was to just some kind of a diversion. Mm, diversion. Because you know. Okay, dig. Movies right now. Dig, dig, dig. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> Why? Sometimes I have no idea when you get some of the shit that I see shoveled out of fucking Hollywood, but there's no reason with the amount of time that's being put into video games, uh -huh, yeah, with yeah, the yeah. actors that are now being involved in video games, the voice acting, the, the, the long elaborate plots. The graphical design that's going into it, just as much work as, say, some of the work that goes into movies like Avatar, 
there's no reason why games shouldn't be recognized. No, no, we've seen them before. This is Quarter the demon step. I think there since like day one. And I'm really pleased to hear that L.A. Noir is getting that kind of attention, and I can't wait to play the game. Okay, great, great, great. Okay. Uh, a lot of people ask me about what? Shout out a lot of how people. How do I record? What camera do I use? What's your process for setting up to record? What's your routine like on a day when you're recording? All these kind of questions I've been getting, and they're all very common. Drink. Yeah. I'm thinking what drink this might call and for drink. is that coming up the next week that I have some some slow time, I may do a, an in-depth series Ooh. of me and how I make my videos and how exactly I set everything up, cool. how that process goes. That'll be informative. So I think I will actually do something like that in the near future. So stay tuned for that. Right. Um, no answer. And the last question that I'll put oh, yeah, into no part, shit. part one. I've had that thought. <laughs> I've, I've had that thought to do that video, and then I was like, everybody's going to be so disappointed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, and a lot of people actually ask me this a question. Lot of people, holy shit. We, I, I mean, I'm trying to, like, I made it the counters before we knew it was going to happen. But, like, a lot of people is, like, insane. Like, every time we get at least 10, like, a lot of people. Time. Every question gets a lot of people, pretty much. It's, like, incredible. Like, you can count on that. A lot of people. A lot of people. So it's not any particular person. Uh -huh. Here you go. A lot of people uh, said what? A lot what? of people said, gee, Phil. A lot of people. Were you Two on this question. Were you a jock? Were you a bully? Yes. Yes. This is the question we want. <laughs> Were you a jock? Were you a bully? Of course, he chooses those two as examples, you know? Were you a jock? Were you a bully? Were you a ladies' man? Well, a lot of people ask that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what he says. A lot of people say, gee, Phil, were you a bookworm? Were you a jock? Were you a bully? Were you bullied? Were you in a clique? A lot of these interesting questions. Yeah, yeah, come on. Um, Answer it, please. started in high school. I didn't really know anyone at the high school. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, that would that's that checks that checks out though because he went to a private middle school and then went to a di uh, different school so he would not know anyone so we know that's true that yeah happen? those kids were definitely strange uh, so how does he <laughs> how does he handle not knowing anyone does he make any friends let's find out and I wasn't I was very skinny in high school if you could believe it if you've seen any of the pictures <laughs> from, uh, from back then around the year two thousand there are could a you show us on the you see I was very skinny. are there. What, what do you? I, all I think I know is from gaming shit, and that's from 2010 and shit. But it sounds like they're out on the internet. Is what he just said. Let me hear that again. From uh, from back then, around the year 2000, there are a couple. I, I, I've never seen any picture from 2000. Of them around the internet. You see, I was very skinny. The arcade photo Jinx thinks is even way after that, isn't it? Like the Justin Wong playing Phil on the arcade. I think like the. Um, hold on, I got it. That, yeah, that's like the youngest photo that I can think of when it comes to. The guy. I got this one uh, here, and this is. I mean, we're still talking. It's far, far from. It's a far cry from 2000, though. I mean, he's already into. He's already doing this shit. And hold on, let me get it up for you. I know it doesn't help now. Hang on, I'll show you. So this. This is a famous one uh, from like a really, really old picture. Justin Wong on the left. Uh, but still. It's way after 2000, isn't it? Oh, the only picks from 2003. All right, well, that's about then. And he was skinny to his to his to his. Uh, yeah, to he his was much list. thinner. It's he was a, much thinner. Yeah. How did sure. he let the? How did he let that happen? He was the Punisher this time. <laughs> and you're the Punisher, dude. You got to keep in shape. He was a badass, dude. All right. Let's he's, well, he was oh, a bodybuilder. God. That's. <laughs> <laughs> Come back to seduce uh, you. Yeah. Like, to watch Before out. Before I even started seriously <laughs> working out or anything, where I buffed up a little bit. Um, oh wait! That was really before I even started seriously working out or anything, where I buffed up a little bit. Uh huh. Uh huh. Buffed up a little bit. Nice, dude. He's a bodybuilder style. <laughs> so, at that point, you know, I was coming in a really skinny, tall kid, uh, going into a school, didn't know a lot of people, and uh, after that, how to? Okay, so he's telling us it didn't go well. I mean, he's given us the explanation as to why, like, you know. I didn't know a lot of people. I was real skinny. You know, he's trying to give you the negative things as to why he wasn't, you know, accepted. I'm sure he's going to tell us he was accepted, but right there, he kind of let it slip. You know, like, I here's the reasons why I wasn't, you know, accepted. It sounded like he were going, yeah, he was going down the road, you know? Notice none of that was, uh, I, my personality sucked ass and nobody liked me. Oh, it no, was, no, no. it was because he was skinny and because he didn't know these people. If they knew him, they, they totally would have thought he was cool. Obviously. Uh -huh. All right. Let's see what, how this goes. Skinny, tall kid, uh, going into a school, didn't know a lot of people. Uh -huh. And, uh, at first I did get bullied. Actually, it was pretty funny. My freshman year. <laughs> He's being honest. <laughs> let's see if it was you funny know, though. 
I'm already kind of laughing. I'm not yeah, going to laugh. It's yeah, kind of funny. This <laughs> could be funny, so I won't hit the button. <laughs> Let's... Uh, every... What, what, what? And uh, at first I did get bullied, actually. It was pretty funny. My freshman year sucked. Uh, everyone, there was a couple kids who tried to bully everyone. Okay. And uh, I was one of the many who got bullied. And that first... Uh, of course, I was one of the many. You know, like, basically the whole school was bullied. So it wasn't just me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> You're really blue, but then what ended I'm still on team. This is pretty funny, actually. Yeah, I'm, I'm laughing, so I'm not hitting the button. <laughs> was in the next year, sophomore year, a, a lot of these kids actually started talking to me and found out that I was a funny guy. Like, <laughs> oh. oh God, they actually it's, started talking to me and found out I was a funny guy. Uh huh. Yeah, they found out you. Were th that's pretty funny. much what I said, though. If they found, <laughs> if they actually got to know me, they'd know I was super cool. Yeah, he that's was it. Funny. Uh huh. They found out he was fun to fuck with more. Yeah, they set him up to dance with hot girls so we could all laugh at him. Year, a, a lot of they thought he was actually... super funny. That's why they called him Phil with the oddly shaped head. Yes, yes. <laughs> he started talking to me and found out that I was a funny guy. Like, oh, as yeah. you know, it's one of the main reasons I'm so popular on YouTube is because I'm entertaining because people say I'm funny. And there you go. See? like you, As you guys know, I'm funny. You guys can tell I'm funny, right? So, I mean, come on. <laughs> God. <laughs> and they they kind of caught on to the sense of humor, and so some of the kids kind of calmed down with the bullying. Some of the kids calmed down with the bullying. Some of the others Not didn't. all of them, in. though. Some there of the we go. Sorry. Dude, if you're getting bullied, you can't be like this. <laughs> if you're getting bullied by any way, I mean, that kind of excludes you from any cool camp, you know what I'm saying? He's trying to be like all these cool yeah. kids thought he's funny. I mean, come on. He is the perfect mark for a bully to be bullied because he acts like an asshole the whole fucking time. I mean, I'm not sure how much he did in in, in real life, you know, because he just does it online. So, of course, maybe it's different. But, like, you know, this, you could tell he gets bullied. I could totally see <laughs> him not being uh, very likable IRL either, in yes. all honesty. I don't think much changes mm. other than that he tries to stay to himself more because he is just so unlikable. Yes. And I bet, yeah, I bet he doesn't talk to anybody at school because, like, you know, he just can't. He wants to stay away from conflict, obviously. He can't. I mean, there's nowhere to run. You can't use big words in real life if you can't use them. You know, you got to back them up, and he's not doing that. So he definitely appears to be bullying. What ended up happening in sophomore year was I had enough. And, you know, it's really hard. What What happened when you had enough? What happened when you had enough? Tell me, <laughs> With the Punisher shirt on? We're, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm worried. <laughs> yeah, Jinx Sinks uh, referencing a story that we'll definitely get to in one of these Ask the Kings, but he did say he made his teacher cry. So, yeah, we'll get there. That's in a different Ask the King, though. I have, I, I have seen that story. You have a family who's a nonviolent family whenever... You have a family that's a nonviolent family? What if you had a violent family? What do they do? Roll up with shotguns? What are they going to do? What? What is this comment? It, I, what are we trying to... Say? Okay, hold on. Let's just list the rest. I'll let them go. Here was I had enough. And you know, it's really hard when you have a family who's a nonviolent family when everyone around you is nonviolent. And I actually was in a Catholic high school as well where obviously you're not supposed to fight. But, you know, at well, some point, enough is enough. And so I remember two particular incidents. There was one kid who was... <laughs> oh, this is the best question of the night right here. Holy shit. All right. Two people started shit. Let's see what he says. Fucking around with me. And he was kicking me. And then finally, he went to kick me again. And I grabbed his fucking leg. And I pulled him. And he went crashing down into a bunch of desks behind him. And uh, we got pretty banged up because of it. Likes and after that, he was like, wow, whoa, well, maybe I should pick like on this kid. He's going to fight back. And, uh, <laughs> All right. Learned uh, their lesson that day, uh -huh. those bozos. Fell back on a lot of desks and stuff. Like what? You just threw him across the room? Uh-huh. Sounds very real. Uh-huh. Sounds very real. It Not didn't... like a Jackie Chan movie. Go ahead. Didn't he say that he pushed that one kid during the Latina uh, story, too? They got into some altercation yeah. and he like pushed a kid into a desk or something. Uh, he was, was always Billy like Badass. That. Oh yeah, all right. That's just the first story. Here we go. There's another particular time I remember. There was this kid who was just really annoying. It wasn't even like he was bullying. He would just like fucking push you and stuff when you were sitting there. And one day in computer lab, he was doing it. So I got up in his face and I said, "If you do it again, I'm gonna fucking kick your ass, basically." And he thought I was fucking around, so he did it again. <laughs> And I pushed him so hard into the wall of my high school, <laughs> this computer lab, it actually made a giant fucking dent in the wall. Like, his whole uh, back uh, imprinted in the wall. His entire back imprinted inside a wall. <laughs> Very normal thing that can happen. Like, the fucking cartoon. It's, it's, 
It's like Wiley e. Coyote when you run him into a tree and his entire outline is in the tree. That's what happened. <laughs> Can you imagine? Come on, man. <laughs> his entire outline was there. Awesome. What a badass, dude. Don't fuck with him. This, Go ahead. this just proves to me that DSP's always lived in his own world. Like oh, he, yeah. He's always lived in his own reality. <laughs> All right. Thank you for re-upping your membership. You know what the real truth is? That. Like, probably, like, he said, like, stop touching me. You know, that's like, you know, stop. And that was the end of it, you know? Stop fucking with me. And that was the end. But he's made this whole, oh, look at the story now. He told him, don't fuck with me or something's going to happen. Well, I like even when he's recounting this story, he kind of like pauses and like thinks about it first. So he's like, well, basically, I I'm going to kick your ass. Like, uh -huh. I like to think that he stuttered in real life, too, which will just get you clowned. Uh -huh. If you're going to stand up for yourself and then stutter, you're a joke. Hey, I'm, you better stop. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, you're going to get it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Because VLX says everything you see here is the real raw film. No, there's a character. This is a character we're getting here. Remember that. This is a character. All right, but let's get back Howard to the Stern wall. style. Uh huh. Let's get back to the wall having the outprint of his victim. Fucking dent in the wall. Yeah. Like his whole back <laughs> imprinted in the wall. Uh huh. <laughs> and he was banged up after that. Obviously, he was like knocked silly because I heard I pushed him so fucking hard. Knocked silly. Now we had yeah he had little birds <laughs> circling his head. You know. It was like he was stunned in Street Fighter, dude. He was stunned. There was birds around the head, dude. It's crazy. <laughs> God. Like he hit his back <laughs> on the wall, not his skull. Why is he knocked silly? I'm He was seeing literal stars, dude. You could grab him. It was around his head. <laughs> And after that, we kind of started becoming friends. And started uh, yeah, asking. that's something that happens, oh, too. Oh, my God. Let's put aside our differences. We are now friends. I've seen your true power. Now we can be friends. <laughs> Literally make-believe land. Yeah. I'm not, not one second of this is real. Nope. I believe... I believe that he was bullied. That's where I stopped believing. Everything after that is bullshit. Yeah, that's yeah, the that's, that's the reality. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't belong to any particular clique or anything in high school. Yeah, you get the thing. I wonder why that is. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have any of those pesky friends, you know. I was actually at the top of my class, not because really, I don't really think because I put in too much effort. I don't know. It was just easy for me. Maybe it's just some people are born with it in their genes. I don't know. But I really, <laughs> after freshman year, I really didn't put any. I, I wasn't born with jeans on, so uh, it couldn't, couldn't be me, <laughs> unlike the guy. <laughs> This is one of the uh, most mysterious things in the whole snort uh, in the Tractiverse for me. Is he is actually a valedictorian though? Somehow, I mean, how small was the school? I don't know, but still, I don't care how small the school is. How could he be the one that gets the highest grades? There's a story there. There has to be. But let's go. You know, really significant need that time in the doc. studying besides uh, maybe one or two courses that really kicked my ass. I remember one of them was like AP British Lit. And boy, that class fucking sucked because yeah, I hated fuck everything British, that I, we did in that class. But you really had to put so much time and effort into it to, to pass it. Um, but yeah, I, I was, I had very good grades in high school. But the group that I hung out with, uh, which was probably like five or six of us. <laughs> we had a special bus. <laughs> <laughs> Some they of called... us wore helmets all the time. <laughs> yeah. It was the special magical bus, they called it. <laughs> We're very independent. We weren't jocks. Uh huh. We weren't nerds. Uh huh. We uh, into like any particular clique. We were kind of just our own group, a group of, of people who just didn't want to be associated with all the other cliques. We wanted to do whatever the fuck we wanted. Uh huh. Uh huh. Mm. Right. Right. That group that doesn't want friends. I love that group. Uh huh. This isn't like the cool, like, punk dude that doesn't want friends. This is not that case if you get my drift. Phil was not in that kind of mindset. <laughs> you would do anything for friends. Anything. <laughs> and that was it. Looks like time's running out here for this this first part. Um, yeah, and we were very independent. Uh -huh. you know, we did whatever the hell we wanted. Actually, yeah. in senior year, we really... Oh, they did whatever the hell they wanted. That's why uh, he did so <laughs> good far. in school. Uh-huh, yeah, we studied and stuff. It was nuts. Our parents said to go to sleep at 8.30 p.m. I was like, fuck it. I'm going to sleep whenever I want. 8.45. <laughs> you guys are badasses, dude. Uh, but, yeah, and that was us. Um, no, I Hell was yeah. a bully or anything in high school, that's for sure. We pretty much asked. What, 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 what? Oh, no, I was. Yeah. yeah, it's tough to be a bully when you're being bullied, sir. What? Is he... <laughs> Did you really want to circle back on that fact, sir? 
But yeah, and that was us. Um, no, I wasn't a bully or anything in high school, that's for sure. We pretty much, at, once we established our little, our own group, we just kind of did whatever we wanted and didn't associate with everyone else. And it was funny because there were people who oh, were involved funny. with different stuff. You know, I was at the top of the class. I was into video games and stuff like that. One of the kids that I was friends with was a, a, a hockey player, so he was a little bit of a jock. Uh, one kid was a very physical, he was actually big. He was like almost like, you know, the kid you would expect to be a bully, but he kind of ended up not being like that because he hung out with us. Uh, just, he sacrificed everything to hang out with us <laughs> Dude, this guy could have got laid But he hung out with us He was cool though <laughs> God, imagine The potential to be cool And instead you decided to hang out with DSP yeah. What a mistake <laughs> Val Val Yeah, great point, big guy Valedictorian that doesn't hang out with any nerds Uh-huh, very real, very real, very true Different people involved in different stuff Oh yeah, stuff. that definitely was not fun Not my school experience But we all kind of came together Different, 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 different Funny. Even though I did laugh. But the other funny thing is, college. Well, Jesus, uh, another funny thing? Uh, we ended up going to the same college, and then after that first semester, we all broke up and never saw each other again. I have no idea what even happened to any of them. So, And there was no 10-year high school reunion, which I was surprised at. So I didn't really get to see what happened to anyone. From Sounds like you guys are really great friends, huh? <laughs> you know? <laughs> I mean, that just shows you weren't really good friends then? I My mean, cool. School. So it's, it, was, it is kind of a weird experience. I kind of thought there would be like a 10-year reunion. I get to get together with them and see how everyone's doing, but that never happened. Uh, oh, yeah, that's not funny, though. And it is what it is. You know, high school was a... a it does kind of sound I'm sad, not, though. I and, uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. Surprised by that. Absolutely. He, he had a sad upbringing in school. His school life was not easy, that's for sure. But, I mean, I don't feel bad for him because it's all his own self. I mean, he does it to himself. I think, oh, like, 100%. The more, the, the more I've seen of this, the more I think his life has always been looking for acceptance that he just can't get. But YouTube gave it to him, and that's why he's still fighting for that. He wants to, he he still wants it. He can't let that after. go. Yeah, yeah. He still wants that, and now he, he's losing that, and that's the worst part. That's what hurts the most is because he's even losing that acceptance, and that's tough because this was the one place he found acceptance. But yeah, I mean, his own doings. Who gives a shit? <laughs> uh, that was my experience. So, all right, that's part one. We will come back with part two. Nope, still there many, you go. Many, many, there many. they this are. Is what, this, is what, this is what fucks up the whole computer, this half-screen transition. Love this bumper, dude. Look at all these goatees you get to see. <laughs> many, many more questions to answer, <laughs> Hell so yeah. uh, we will be back. All right, there's the first one. Last one of the night is here because it's just as long as that one, so strap in. Lay up, motherfucker! Strap in. Welcome back to part two of Ask the King for April 21st, 2011. Just started my timer here again. Let's get right back into it because there's plenty of questions uh, left right. over. Uh, next question is, what do you think of the YouTube copyright system? Because oh, I've seen a God. video on YouTube that's not flat. Ten, ten minutes with minimum With two here. bare naked women and one guy dancing to take on me. And there's even one part where the guy fucks one of them. Huh? What's your opinion on oh, this? Oh, hard. Laser T10. What's well, the, yeah, give us the link. Well, my first response is... Links. We want to see it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, me, oh. Anyway. me and wow. Phil made the same joke. <laughs> That's never happened before. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> wow. ALT. Explain yourself. <laughs> Series over. I can't do that. We made the same joke. Oh, that's an L. Anyway, uh, great question, because you will see that. You'll see some stuff on YouTube with nudity, and you're like, what the fuck is this? You'll see really nasty stuff on YouTube that like never what? gets any attention, nudity? never gets flagged, <laughs> and then you'll see stuff like me playing a video game, and it gets flagged. And it's like, what the fuck? What is going on with this system? Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not just copyright system. It's their, their rules of conduct and all of that. Basically, how does nudity have anything to do with copyright system, by the way? I'm not really... Yeah, I'm kind of confused. Yeah. Also, you can still find nudity on YouTube. It's yeah, on there. Yeah. You just don't have to know the words. Uh-huh. Oh, and Atlas knows the words. He put in the work. He's got a whole word bank. You know what I'm saying? Atlas is on it. Really, their system sucks <laughs> because their website is so big. Well, I mean, what it's saying like that, <laughs> yeah. but okay. No response. But yeah, you're right. You're right. You, I do have a word bank. <laughs> they realize that there's absolutely no way they can screen everything. He keeps the books. the books, yeah. So <laughs> that's the books he keeps. <laughs> he has books of them. They're more magazines, <laughs> but you know. Uh, okay. it's... <laughs> Got it. Two different factors. Number one, automation. They have automation. an automated system uh -huh. that routinely searches newly uploaded videos for music that it recognizes, and or images that it recognizes. And so if it somehow recognizes a part of your video as something that someone else says that they have rights to, yeah, you will get flagged. Um, okay. And then you have the ability to dispute that and get it cleared up, which is good. 
Uh, and this is, used to happen to me frequently with stuff with EA, because I think what would happen is they would see like parts of a trailer for an EA game and match it to maybe when that shows up in the actual gameplay footage. Oh, come on. And they'd say, oh, this looks the same. Oh, Eric, we're going to flag it until you can dispute it and say that you, it didn't violate a copyright. Um, now, on the flip side of this automated system, YouTube is very, very receptive to people just saying, oh, this is a copyrighted material and, you know, I don't understand why this is allowed to be on YouTube, or, oh, this is my copyrighted material, take it down. And uh, we just the best case up. for that would be last year. With yeah, this question Steve sucks. Jones, Fiasco, get to the answer, we're we're not ask how it works, you say, what's your opinion? Saw, and basically got my channel shut down temporarily because he said that they, they, I was violating copyrights by doing a playthrough of Splinter Cell Conviction. So... That's really the two methods. Number one, automation, right. which is now, a really bad system what do you think about it? matches bullshit. And number two, if someone just actually, you know, submits a, a complaint to YouTube, they can fool them very easily. Oh, um, what I can tell you is this, since I've been with Machinima, uh, it, I, oh. I seem to have been We're not asking this. automation issue. Meaning We're not asking this. Meaning, upload a video, and it would go <laughs> out there, and then within, say, 24 hours... I like the machine in place. Automatically, yeah. automation, yeah, do it work. that system, it would flag it, and then you'd have to dispute the video. Well, ever since I've been in this new Machinima program, yeah, it's not happening yeah. anymore. So I get awesome, the feeling man. that YouTube gives Machinima partners the benefit of the doubt and says, all right, we understand that you're with a company. It's a large company, one of the biggest companies on our website. We yeah, the automated system the gives them the benefit of the doubt, of course. Yeah. So I haven't been getting a lot of those automated problems. Um, so but yeah, your opinion, the bottom line sir. is... Oh. YouTube's too big for its own good. They know that. They know they can't f screen or flag every video. So you're going to get videos like this one with naked people dancing around. And if a lot of people haven't seen it, and more importantly, if no one has complained about it directly to YouTube, it's probably still going to end up sitting there on YouTube. It sounds like I'm going insane, but he did not answer the question here. He didn't. No, I was just, I was going to let him, I was going to let him finish, yeah. but absolutely didn't answer the question. Just explained no. how it worked yeah. and then said, I'm not having problems. Uh -huh. And then said, if you have right. nudity and no one flags it for inappropriate, it stays up. With no problems. Okay. So cool. Next question. Uh, one of my favorite aspects of your playthroughs is that you are 100% independent, impartial, and honest. Would you ever accept... <laughs> wrote that? DSP? <laughs> My favorite thing is you're impartial and honest, okay? Great. A lot of people in chat are saying, uh, I'm, the, the I'm honest. <laughs> Who asked this question? Next question. Uh, one of my favorite aspects of your playthroughs is that you are 100% independent, impartial, uh -huh. and honest. Would you ever accept sponsorship or advertisement from a game developer or publisher? Okay. Oh? Okay, all right, Atlas, prediction time. Does he say yes to this one day in the future or never? Oh, man. Uh, and chat you as well, please guess. Does he say, I feel like, I'll never do that or I will someday maybe? I feel like he's going to say, I will someday maybe if I can um, find a company that I really agree with and <laughs> will allow me to do the things that I want to do and it's all up to me. Like, I feel like that's the answer then. Yeah, I think I'm probably on that same thought. A lot of people are saying never. I think he might say what Atlas said, like give the, if I find the perfect, you know, situation, then yeah, I will. Uh, that, but let's see. You feel that that would harm your reputation. Also, what do you feel of other game reviewers such as IGN or Electronic Gaming Monthly who take advertisements from game publishers? And oh, that's first, for uh, social spasms. Why'd you have to ask the second part? Because now he's going to talk about that for 10 fucking minutes first. Um, good question. <laughs> good, great question. The first question, would I ever... Here we go. Except sponsorship or advertisement Let's go. from a game developer or Come on now. Absolutely. Why not? Oh, damn. If they want what? to support what I'm doing, Wait a pay minute. me to do it. <laughs> damn. This is when he needs money, though, I guess. He's still not... You know, he already said, it. maybe I can do this in two years. But he's like, absolutely yes. Damn. Accept it. Well, wow. on the flip side of that, and this is part two of the question, uh -oh. would it harm my reputation? The answer would be, in my opinion, no. It wouldn't harm my reputation unless I changed what I'm doing. Okay. So, if... Let's say EA contacted me and said, Phil, we'd like you to play all of our games. Here's such and such amount of money to do it. Or we, we're going to send you all the products for free so that you can play all of our games and give your opinions and reviews of them. Yeah. Uh, and I did it, and I was completely honest about it. And so some games I loved and some games I admitted sucked. Uh, and there was no problem with that. Then No, that wouldn't hurt my reputation. I would have no problem doing that. But if EA contacted me... And yeah, said, great oh, point. Wait, Everybody in chat's putting out the good point. This is when he could get sponsorships. <laughs> great point. Yeah, 100%. <laughs>
we're not at that point where everyone knows he's a douchebag yet. You do all of our games for free, but you have to say they're all good. I would never do extremism, that. I would extremism. never change to do that. Uh-huh. That's fucking bullshit in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, hell yeah. That, unfortunately, as he's mentioned, I hate that he gets to pretend like, like he knows, like now that that's how that works, and uh-huh. all of his dents believe that that's how it always works, and that everyone else is. I a uh, shill. I hate that he gets to do that uh-huh. because he's just because he's been around for so long. Like <laughs> so fucking. Dumb, it's just yeah. it's just dumb. <laughs> just it takes ten minutes to explain how it works. Let me tell you something, guys. I'm an independent guy. I've never done this show and stuff like that. You just get, uh, it's... do. There's so like, how could IGN say that oh, Epic God. Mickey? I'm sorry, not IGN. One, I forget who it was, but someone said that Epic Mickey was one of the best games of the year. You're a fucking. Oh my idiot. God. Yep. So whoever had, who could have an opinion? What that means is number one, you didn't play the game. You didn't. <laughs> He 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 changes up his number one. Like that was the thumb, but sometimes it is the pointer. I think we've seen too, haven't we? Like, this is number one. I watch for that. It's a new thing to watch for. Best games of the year. You're a fucking idiot. Yeah. What that means is, number one, you didn't yeah. play the game. <laughs> you didn't play it honestly. You didn't beat the game because you didn't see how repetitive and the game was, how bad the controls were. I'm not were, a fan of that style of holding up a three either. The, the, <laughs> Once, the, yeah, the, the thumbs yeah, up, the middle, two, three, yeah. The middle, yeah. He I'm does not both, a, though, but it's, yeah, it's more. And you're a fucking liar. It's that simple. <laughs> Some games are just not that good. <laughs> Last one is you're a liar. <laughs> Okay, and for these uh, reviewers to, or these media outlets to inflate scores because they're getting free copies, advanced copies of the games, mm-hmm. and don't, don't, rest assured, that is what's happening. They're getting advanced copies of games, and because of that, the game is Rest assured, like, motherfucker. Hey, you know, hello ODST. We know the game's really short. We know it was supposed to be only a DLC, but since we're giving you the game a month ahead of time so you can review it, kiss its ass. And that's exactly what all these mainstream <laughs> media outlets... Yeah, that's how they do it, by the way, in the contract. Hey, I know this game totally fucking sucks, but say it's awesome, okay? We're giving you the game a month early. <laughs> Yo, I, if, I, if someone put a contract in front of me that said, hey, by the way, at the bottom, and it said that, I just sign it. I don't yeah. give a shit. That's so funny Absolutely. to me. <laughs> it's good for the meme. By the way... <laughs> Halo 3 ODST was a piece of shit. It really was not worth a retail Lies. release. Slander. It was definitely yeah. not worth sixty dollars. Not worth sixty dollars. <laughs> Anyone who bought the game well, is okay. It probably family. wasn't, but agrees. <laughs> and sixty dollars. Anyone it? who bought the game uh-huh. isn't a hardcore Halo fanboy. Agrees. And uh, if it's not a hardcore Halo fanboy, the I hate to see this kind of stuff, but oh, I hate to see it. Unfortunately, it happens every day. Uh-oh. I would accept sponsorship. I would accept, you know. Uh, you know, people, I would accept that kind of a, a partnership with a company as long as they agreed to let me be honest. I would never lie or change my opinion on a game because someone paid me for it. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. What a hero. Uh, Very what cool. a hero. Next question is from Foos. This is an interesting Oh, Foos, that's the girl. Into- We're back yeah. to the girl. We're back to the girl. Not to the show again this Man. time, but Foos is a use, uh, a mod of his, would become a mod of his forums that don't exist yet. That's foos. A couple. So it's a female style question. These are rare back in the day. And Phil sometimes that answers these much differently. So let's see what we get here from foos. People foes. on YouTube that I've seen this happen with. She says, hey, Phil, apparently I whore or I Justine. Yes, I fucking Oh, uh, well, we get I Justine slander already? I didn't play this on the I Justine episode, which you can watch. I was right just here. about to say ALT. You didn't know about I this coming this. up? I, did, I missed this. All right, let's see I whore. Well, Foes is a little snappy, isn't she? She said I whore. Damn. Jesus. It's apparently I whore. Or I Justine. Yes, I fucking hate that talentless bitch. Jesus. Made a gaming channel. Wow. I, for anyone that doesn't know I Justine, she was, like, huge. Uh, if one of the first, I don't know if she was one of the first, but she was definitely a huge YouTuber uh, that's been doing it long as Phil. Still is making videos to this day. Phil wishes he had her success. It's just, uh, I, she, every, he's very jealous of I Justine for many reasons. But ju- being just one of the, at the time... I, I just want to point out how... Uh... How unprofessional and just trashy it is to, you know, say, even if that is how the question was phrased and, uh-huh. and, and said by the viewer, I just, you shouldn't do that to yeah. another content creator that you really don't know anything about or have never interacted with. Yes, I, I whore. It's just a horrible look. And, and by the way, she was so talentless that uh, now she has 7.1 million subscribers. Uh, Philip Brunel is stuck at 200,000, and they started about the right same time. I mean, so 
There you go. Um, Tobuscus video is definitely coming on the. He needs Tobuscus definitely has to be on the iceberg. Uh, so I'll definitely do Tobuscus. But he's another one that uh, Phil bitched about back in the day, and she's releasing whatever the fuck she wants. Still, fifty thousand views, two hundred eighty-four thousand views. She's doing okay. <laughs> she, she apparently does have a little bit of talent. I mean, at least she can support a fan base. Let's put it that way, because I don't know if she's good or not. But, anyways, this is a lot of saltiness from everybody. But let's hear. Made a gaming channel. But ju being just one of the, at the time, unknown people... <laughs> yeah, Silent Weapons nailed it. <laughs> Phil became hijacked on couch. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Started all of this a few years back as a hobby, having to sit through countless setbacks and working your way up. Oh, let's talk about how much more harder you work for it than I, Justine. Uh -huh. Copyright strikes and finally trying to get some source of income from doing this to support yourself... What is your opinion you on the fact that someone like today, I, I appreciate it. was able to actually just create a channel, getting that channel partnered instantly, without any problems, uh -huh. while she's doing the same thing that you are? Oh, wow. Okay, so this... Oh, wow. It kind of sucked. Okay, so... Lie. This is something he's going to bitch about. I don't. I thought it was later than this, but apparently it's already been in his mind now uh, that a lot of people made gaming channels on YouTube when gaming just blew up on YouTube. When, like, you know, D DSP was one of the first ones there, and he, obviously, if anyone of his talent can do it, people like Tobuscus and I, Justine, said, fuck it. I could do better than that. <laughs> and they did. And because they were so huge, they got big followings, and, and, and Phil was obviously still salty to this day. Many years later, still salty about it. Uh, so let's hear, that's what Foz is talking about here. Let's hear how pissed piss Phil's going to be at this time about it. I thought this was a later thing, but 2011, we're already talking about it. Damn. I mean, there, the bottom line is, uh, they, those people were trying to vary their content, and, and they were trying to do that in 2011. They didn't wait till 2023 to do DSP Reacts and DSP I was throwback. just about to bring that up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It just shows you how late to the game he is on everything. Uh -huh. Even that stupid shit with the thumbnails and the titles. It wasn't until people were telling him, hey, you might want to look into changing something about the way you put, put out content that might appeal to other people. And <laughs> even then he was like, well, I don't really care. It's whatever you guys want to see. I don't watch the videos. Like, he he just he's never really given a shit about doing anything out of what he was already doing. Yes. And, it's and it's amazing. I Justine, lover or hater, tried new shit all the time and was not stopping. You know? That's how they're still around. And of course they have much more talent and they care a lot more too. But that's a big part of it, is you gotta try new shit. Mashitima tried to make him do new shit. Be do a commentating channel. He spat on that idea. What the fuck's wrong with you? I do gaming. Like, you can't do this, man. You can't, <laughs> it's amazing the opportunity he was given. And just, yeah, I I don't know I don't know how he has done this for so long and and just never thinks about doing anything. I'm at work <laughs> and I'm thinking about like different ideas and I'm and I'm spitballing like, oh, what if I do this? What if I yeah. do that? Oh, I'd like to try that out. DSP does this shit every day and never has a new idea. And he's had situations where other people, like, that's the dream. Uh, dude, Machinima's like, we'll help you get into commentating on fighting games. We'll help you get into it. People kill for someone to help them do shit. You know, hard is to break into that shit. We'll help you get into it. Fuck you. I want to make gaming videos. Very cool. Very cool. It's just so frustrating when so many other people out there are awesome but can't get into it, and he's still allowed, did, you know? <laughs> yeah, he's being handheld, and yeah. he still just is kicking and screaming the whole time. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I whore. Uh-huh, let's call her I whore. <laughs> Instantly, without any problems, while she's doing the same thing that you are. That's a good question. Great question. Uh, <laughs> oh, so and it's not just her. It's her friend, Toby Gang, or Toby. Yeah, Tobuscus mentioned. Yeah. Tobuscus, Tobuscus, whatever his name is. Whatever the fuck. <laughs> whatever the fuck. They might have done it. Uh, what they did is they went on YouTube and they basically did fluff, okay? They did their vlogs every day. They talked about celebrities. They talked about the nonsense. That all these top 20 Doesn't people he have a vlog channel by now? Uh, not. Yeah, he just talks about games, though. I think he's like. Tr I like, what's the, like, what's the difference of a vlog and playing a video game? Like, just different kinds of content. But, like,. What, we're just saying, like, all that shit at this point? Like, what? All, c talking about anything is shit unless you're what? 
Watching a fucking game? YouTube seem to be doing. They all do the same fucking I guess. Thing. Yeah. Really? What is he saying here? What are you supposed to do then? It really is not that interesting. It's boring. But... I hate to say it, but dumb people soak that shit up. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> People absolutely <laughs> say the same shit about his content. It's just boring gameplay that looks like ass. It's boring, it's dumb, and dumb people soak it up. Like, only it's really pot calling kettle. Jesus. Yeah, dude, only, only valedictorians appreciate DSP gaming and, and terms such as... Oh. All right, all right, I'm not going to say it myself. All right, N-word, it's time. <laughs> You have to be a scholar to understand Chicky Chang Wang, Atlas. Maybe that's why we don't think it's funny because you don't. We're not smart enough to understand uh, chicken fried rice or oh hello chicken fried rice. That you have to be really smart to understand those. I get that. I My get brain's that. too small. That's a problem. <laughs> I hate to say it, but dumb people soak that shit up. They really do. Uh, dumb people. Uh huh. Dumb people. <laughs> I don't have, I don't know what to do. I want to go on YouTube for 20 minutes and I want to watch people make fun of celebrities. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this, this whole segment's good. This is the mouth drooler, uh, Phil character. This is rare. They really do. They're dumb people. They're, I don't have, I don't know what to do. I want to go on YouTube for 20 minutes and I want to watch people make fun of celebrities. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Good Freak, for saying that. You know someone that never makes fun of anyone else? D DSP. He never does. It's crazy. Like, he called I Justine, I Justine. You know, he didn't call her anything else, right? I didn't hear anything else. Well, he had to call her that because <laughs> ah, that's the way it was worded, dude. He would be not he honest if he said anything else, obviously. <laughs> that's true, that's true. Yeah, he never hates on people, though. Phil never talks bad about people. That's one of the best parts about him. Big ups to Pasta Maker says, Foes never got to fillet Phil, so might as well fillet his ego. That's a good point. That's what she's trying to do. I mean, Foes could have been Leanna, I'm guessing. Maybe that wasn't Phil's type or something, but... <laughs> and they go do that, and, that's, and then YouTube loves it because no copyright issues, you know? Yeah. Okay, so they would like that. No, no copyright music use. It's just some idiot talking to a camera with pictures of stuff behind them and making fun of them. And uh, so those people get featured on the main page of YouTube every day and they become the most popular people on YouTube. I don't agree no, with it. Wait I a minute. So yeah. he's angry. He's angry that YouTube is putting people on the front page that are not causing problems for them and getting people to watch their yes. videos. Damn, yeah. I hate YouTube. <laughs> How dare they run? you know their site the least problematic way they can yeah they're well getting, they're okay views, you know they're getting views and they're not causing problems how dare they how dare you youtube <laughs> i'm trying they're to get not like old using video. hateful slurs like dsp so <laughs> obviously they're not as cool i gotta show it now so 2011 was how many years ago that was 12 years ago four, 13 years ago now let's bring up an i justine video from the same time so just so we get a look at the the differences of quality that went into this even if you hate i justine let's see if we could tell the difference in work ethic all right let's see it so here's a one minute and 40 seconds video and it might be cringe because most of her shit is kind of like cringy but look at okay you tell me what you'd rather watch all right guys so here we go. First of all, we have a very eye-catching thumbnail. I mean, no doubt about that. This is an eye-catching thumbnail. In 2013 or 2010, this is insane. Okay, so this is getting hundreds of thousands of clicks right here. Hi. Hola. Hey. Hello. It's already editing. Okay. We already have editing happening. A very much nicer camera. I mean, I was just about me. to say a higher quality camera than DSP's using for his footage. <laughs> like the, that there or the gameplay. So we're, we're off to a, a great start. <laughs> so now that we got that wonderful reading over with, I need your help. And yes, even you, that person who was just listening to this video and so Gee, the, like those effects? That's th look at that. That takes work. The internet on top of my face. Yeah, you too. I'm participating in this awesome project with GE and Howcast. It's called the Eco Magic Nation <laughs> Video Challenge with a bunch of other YouTubers. Anyways, as you can see, this person puts work into their ed into their into their product, and they got four hundred forty thousand views back then. Uh, so yeah, but they well, suck, by the way.
even beyond the editing, like she has she has energy and like it seems excited and happy to be doing this video and that <laughs> resonates with people. Yeah. How happy does DSP look to be doing the video that he's currently doing? Uh -huh. He looks miserable the whole time. Look at this work done. What I used to make videos. She's trying to make some affiliate links and stuff. DSP, no time for that. He absolutely could have done that. No time for that. He just had it. He just said it, a lot of people ask him about what camera do I use? What do I do for my editing? And he couldn't provide, you know, he's not putting any links down there to the <laughs> camera or, you know, any peripherals that he's using. C couldn't be bothered. Oh, yeah. Let's call her I whore because she's popular. Bullshit. But on the flip side of it, I work hard enough that every day, traditionally, my channels that- No, no, I just showed you what hard work looks like. I put in new videos <laughs> on, make the top 100 most viewed channels on YouTube anyway. Because there's nothing else. So a lot of the times I beat those people, even though they get the front page feature, and I'm fucking stuck in the appendix of YouTube, I'm still making it, and I'm still getting the views. And Stuck I'm still in the surviving. appendix. Appendix of YouTube. I mean, so I've never heard me. anyone say that. <laughs> That's a hype place to be. I'm not going to take the time out actively to seek those people out and hate on them on a regular basis. There's no reason to do it, okay? No, Invisible Mute, I'm not letting you say that. Because, yes, there was a lot of thirsty boys clicking her thumbnails, no doubt. But you saw the editing. Oh, 100%. That. You saw yeah, the editing that yeah, went yeah, into yeah. her stuff. She's not fucking around here. She's putting the work. She's not just a pretty face talking up there. People are successful. She has that too, no doubt. But you know, haters are gonna hate, but uh -huh. if you're successful, God willing, God bless you. That's yeah. great. That's why she has seven right. million subs now, and you have two thousand, two hundred thousand. I'm happy for you. Uh -huh. But there are some people like I just seen Tobuscus, Tobiscus, whatever his name is, uh -huh. and a couple other people who had that one kind of archetypal channel that for some reason is popular on YouTube for dumb reasons, and they said, hey, now I see potential to make extra money doing something else that I've never done before. Yeah, imagine that. Imagine thinking that. Let's try new things. And so they're making these gaming channels, and all they're doing is sitting this there. This is Mr. Business. Uh -huh. no, no. You would think <laughs> if you're business savvy and you do one thing and you see that there's a market for something else that you could get into, that you would also be interested in doing that. That seems like a... Uh, a healthy way to run your business if if it's applicable to your business. Uh -huh. I don't understand how he can be upset about this. You went to school for this. <laughs> Stay in your lane. That's what he learned in school. Comments here and there. And yeah. I've seen I'm sure that was right, right on the front of the book. Them, direct feed, and then they edit in their voices. Oh, direct feed. How dare they? Afterwards, trying to make jokes about what they're watching. It's nothing like what I do. From what I've heard... Yeah, good point, good freak. I just Dean was talking about tech stuff too. It's not like it was crazy. It's not like she was talking about animals and then jumped to gaming. She was literally a tech channel. It's not anywhere near as interesting as what I'm doing or as entertaining as what I ah, do. But of course not. And what is this nose bend happening? All right, cool. Unfortunately, these people are probably <laughs> making it. I just Dean must edit those out. Shit. She must. I'm sure she does those digs too. She just edits them out. Load of money she? off these partner <laughs> channels simply she because they She gets two knuckles deep every time. Uh -huh. Partner channels to begin with. <laughs> beforehand and people are just kind of pouring over and again uh -huh. if you have that popular channel that's always on the main page of youtube yep. and then you make another channel people are gonna progressively oh god jump from one to the other nice. you're gonna get that Sorry audience that. carrying over and it's kind of she ridiculous. edit that and out I talked about this <laughs> yeah. on my forums i basically said this would be like me creating uh -huh. a vlog channel where all yeah. i did was talk <laughs> about celebrities and all this shit and trying to get people to come from my gaming channel over to the vlog channel just for the sake of doing it and making more money. Imagine that. And the bottom line is, I'm oh not God. into that, okay? The reason I really enjoy <laughs> what I'm doing right now is because I Stay love my lane. video games. I love playing them. Oh, God. I love the experience of them, becoming good at them. I love cracking jokes at them. Oh, I just yeah. really enjoy what I'm doing. Feature. And that's why I love this, and I want to keep doing this for an extended period of time. Oh, and yeah. if I can support myself and maybe make a little bit of money doing it, that's amazing. You know, that's the ideal state. Loving what you're doing to make money. Um, I wonder if he still well, believes I that today. Sell out per se and make a channel that has absolutely nothing to do oh. with the kind of stuff that I like to do. Now, you know what? This would be a good time to bring up the stuff I was doing on the King of Hate HD. Because if you remember, when that was a partner channel with YouTube, I started a bunch of series. I forgot the question. Oh, yeah, it's about. Yeah, we started with I Justine. What do you uh, think yeah, about I Justine? Justine. Over there, like, Ask the King, this one right here. Also, DS. Yeah, great point, big guy. 
How come the how come those how come I Justine when she opens the channel all her followers go crazy over there but when Phil says it, it's like pulling teeth to get people over there. Huh. He tries it uh, cooking with the cane and that stuff was fun to do for a couple of months but to be completely honest it did kind of kind of get stale for me around December. Didn't make enough views. Um I was kind of running out of ideas of stuff to do especially with the cooking like I'm not <laughs> Yeah, a good of cook. course you of I'm course you were. I cook. Dude. I'm not, I'm not a good cook. He has a head. <laughs> Oh my god. I know He's I'm got not. no creativity. He can't he doesn't think about anything. Of course he ran out of ideas instantly. He doesn't bother. And so He's so creatively bankrupt. Yeah, he has to his only change of content is the games coming out. That's why that's the only way he could have like new ideas is because new games come out. <laughs> that's literally it. I know that. I actively understand that. Yeah. So, Hell yeah. Actively. I really understand. wasn't enjoying it that much. Instead of passively understand it, you actively understand it. Much by the end. At first, right. it was fun. It was like a ride of hilarity that people were loving those videos that I was putting out. But then after a while, it kind of got <laughs> Shout out Ride of and hilarity. And so subsequently, I ended up losing the YouTube partnership anyway. And I didn't have any reason to make those kind of videos anymore. Well, so, oh. so it's almost oh. like you just admitted to only doing them for the money. Is that what I'm getting out of that? <laughs> He just said there was no reason to do that because he never got the YouTube contract. So it means he wasn't doing it. He was literally doing it just for the money. That I was putting out, but then after a while, yeah. it kind of got stale. Uh -huh. And so subsequently, I ended up losing the YouTube partnership anyway, and I didn't have any reason to make those kind of videos anymore. So he just that, said. The proper use of subsequently. I, I mean, that's fine. But he just said, I couldn't do it because I didn't make any money, so there was no point to it. So he's literally doing the thing that I, Justine, is doing. In his mind, he's accusing I just need of doing the thing he's not doing because he didn't make any money. So, okay. So, for me, it would be dishonest for me to say, for example, ask Machinima, gee, can, if I make a new channel, DSP Cooking with the King, that would be the name of the channel. DSP if you Cooking put with ads the King. on my videos and I'll cook and we'll make money together. Yeah. And, you mm -hmm. know, Machinima might say no, but they might say, hey, this kid makes a lot of money, you know, on maybe his gaming channels. So let's carry that over to other channels yeah, as well. Why not? And they might say yes. Okay. And if they said yes, that would be basically me selling out. It's me doing something I don't really enjoy to. Uh... <laughs> Thanks for the big ups, Anime Slayer. Welcome to the stream. Oh, big ups. Doing, being dishonest and just Good doing it for the sake of doing it. Now, I'm sure that these people who have these vlog channels and are making the gaming channels say, "Oh, yeah, but you know, I always was a pop, uh, you know, a gamer." And, you know, yeah, this is were? just me talking now about actually tech? getting to do this, f whatever. The bottom line is, oh. Wait. it seems to me that people are finding out that now video games are popular. Just like we just talked about in the previous video. Everyone's finding out that video games are po very popular on the internet, very popular in real life, big money, bigger than movies. Very popular on the internet and very popular in real life. <laughs> Gaming videos. <laughs> or yeah, we're just not realizing this. <laughs> They're both popular in, in on the internet and also in real life. That's pretty cool. Please. And so now everyone's trying to I'm make confused a as to how he thinks that if he made a, a, a second channel for doing his cooking stuff and he immediately got it partnered or, or whatever, that that's selling out because that's not something that he normally does. How how is that selling out? Yeah, so what, it doesn't I, make I any know, sense to you me. You have to be doing something your whole life to be make videos about it without it being selling out. It's kind of the argument he has. It's like well, that's a good thing been... I became a detractor then. I know, yeah. <laughs> I've been detracting since I was five. But no, he says, like, I always was a gamer, so that therefore I'm not selling out when I make gaming videos because I'm doing it for the love. I didn't get paid in the beginning. If you make anything else, though, that's where you're doing, that's where you're shilling, apparently. I mean. I was one of the innovators on YouTube. Ooh, oh, gonna... I was one of the innovators. Pointing a camera. I hate it here. <laughs> I was one of the innovators. Yeah. And so now everyone's trying to make a buck. I was one of the innovators on YouTube. Yeah. I'm hell yeah. I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing. I'm not gonna be dishonest and start doing things I don't enjoy. Okay. This is DSP reacts. This is what I want to focus on. They want to do it. Ko gaming. I, yeah. Is it? Does it piss me off that people are basically getting free money because dumb people follow them for uh -huh. from their dumb. Yeah, dumb people follow them because they enjoy their content. But yeah, okay. Channel to a gaming channel. Yeah, it pisses me off. Yeah. But I'm more focused on what I'm doing, and I'm not gonna let this get to oh, me or anything on. like that. I'm, as you know, I'm a very positive person. <laughs> I'm a very positive person. 
Okay. He's very positive, but he's sitting here b being upset that <laughs> somebody else's followers are following the things that they're continuing to do. Who's more I, positive? How, I, I just, I whore or... <laughs> Gosh, she's making videos for 17 years. She's been at it forever. <laughs> there we go. Right now, I'm writing my, my popularity. Right now, I'm trying to grow my channels. Uh, right, a DSP gaming, a DSP Street Fighter, and mm -hmm. put as much good content on there as possible. Awesome. I'm not concerned with what everyone else is doing. Oh, trust me, you are. You you would have further spout spats with I Justine and with Tobuscus both. So to hell with it. Hell with okay. it. Okay. I don't give a shit about that. Next question. Hey, Phil, I'm in college right now, and I'm studying as a business major. Oh, God. And I was wondering, since... Do not ask him about college advice. Since you were, were a business major oh, yourself, yeah. do you have any tips for me? How difficult was Oof. it to get your degree, and did it feel like it was worth the effort? Thanks, and that's from Crystal Laser. That was Crystal Laser. Oh, now we're going to hear about how he couldn't get a job in his field or something, so it didn't really matter. I, I right now, am going to be very honest with you and try to help you out, and I'm going to try to help everyone else out that's either in college... I hope he talks about how he didn't get uh, scholarships because he wasn't the right race or whatever. Yeah, I hope we get that, and I hope we get how <laughs> college degree doesn't matter. It's it's not. Look at me. I found a job doing this. You don't need to have a college degree, but like you know, he's a one in a million case. Just win the lottery, like me. Uh, Come on. You're going to college. It's very simple. Okay. Oh, it's simple. It's simple. When you're in college, what do you do? You have to take the time to, and I hate to say this, but kiss ass. Make connections. Oh. Kiss ass. That's the way to get through college, dude. Kiss ass. And make sure that when you're getting out of college, you know enough people that you're going to get a good job. What happened to me was... I, I didn't do the kiss ass part. I, did. I was just getting laid and banging. I did decent in college. I went through there. But for me, it was like college is one side of my life where I just go and study. And then I have other sides. Like I have my video game side of my life that where I love video games and Street Fighter and stuff like that. And then I had another part of my life that was like my family and friends and they were all kind of separate. So school, hobbies, family. Okay. I'm on board so far. He's making it sound way more serious, but okay, I'm on board. I didn't really focus oh, in he, on it's that, it's that same mindset. He's got to set all the things have to have a category, and that's the only thing that they can do. Uh, so like the family can't be in the hobbies, can't be involved uh, in school life. Friends God, separate from school, you know. Sometimes you also, do have to say bye to hobbies in different parts of your life for certain reasons. We could do that, but yeah, go ahead. Oh, a hundred percent. And knowing DSP, when he says kiss ass, he means uh, just you know be friendly and sociable and likable, so that, that people will remember you part. and contact you. <laughs> that's the hard part. One of them, I put enough effort into everything that I was successful, and okay. I did get my degree in finance eventually. After changing degrees. What ended up happening was I didn't have any connections when I got out of college. I didn't make make nice with any of the professors. I wasn't. I didn't make nice. Mm -hmm. You know, getting trying to get in with them or anything like that. See, Jacob, I've heard this. So real quick, um, Jacob does a call back here to the valedictorian part. Valedictorian was is all uh, the reason was he valedictorian is all the smart kids boycotted like they did in Evo. But you can't really, <laughs> if you're being serious, I don't think you can boycott valedictorian. Like, if you get the top <laughs> scores, you are valedictorian. But someone else said on a different stream that private schools sometimes don't have the same criteria as public schools. Because for me, it was the highest grade gets it. There's no discussion here. <laughs> That was my understanding. I, yeah. When I heard that on your stream, I was like, I've literally never heard that before yeah. in my life. Uh, that doesn't even make sense to me. But someone but said sure. at private schools, they could do something else. So that could be too. Did they, but I, we'll probably never get to the bottom of it. And after college, no one wanted to hire me. All the jobs <laughs> that were available after college. I believe that were though. <laughs> in the finance field. There uh -oh. were unpaid internships. Which unfortunately you could be doing while you're in college. But generally, because I wasn't rich and my parents weren't rich, there was no way I would be able to do an unpaid internship that was a full-time thing mm -hmm. because I needed money to pay my bills, I needed money to survive, and my parents couldn't afford to pay my way while I did an unpaid internship full-time for several years. Okay. The other kind of jobs were basically, well, because you were buddy-buddy with the professor, the uh, professor happened to know someone who works in the investment. In other words, be nice to your professors. Banking industry, and he gets you a job. Yeah, just talk so, to them like human beings uh -huh. and um, just kind of relate to them. And they'll be like, you know what? I think I actually have a spot. Yeah. Or I know a guy who has a spot. <laughs> and I think you'd fit. I think that, yeah, that's all you really have to do. D just show a little bit of care. But that's the hardest part for him. So, when I graduated, I was fucked. I ended up... <laughs> 
I was fucked. Instead of something that was like investment banking or something that I had studied to do, I ended up becoming a loan officer for a bank and eventually ended up working for a division of the bank that did predatory lending yeah. to people who had very low credit scores lending. and basically tried to give them way more money in a mortgage to consolidate all of their debt than really their property was probably valued for. Mm -hmm. And what ended up happening was the bubble burst on the real estate industry and all that disappeared. So I did it for about a year. I got, yeah. got out. And then the I, I got out. We know the truth of that is nothing about getting out. It's him getting told to get out. The bubble burst and everyone in that industry got fucked. Uh-huh. Everyone got fucked, but you were told to get out because you couldn't do it and you blamed them for getting bad leads. That's what he said. I got all the bad leads. Uh -huh. And since then, I've floated around a whole bunch of different jobs. I worked for Best Buy at one point. I ended up working for this previous company that was involved with helicopters. Hey! So I've been like a jack Sikorsky, hey. without saying Sikorsky. Jack of all trades. I've done all kinds of... I'm a jack of all trades. Jack of all trades. Yeah. <laughs> the or... jack of all trades. Circuit City... Best Buy, uh, Yogurt Shop, Sikorsky from Daddy, and Predatory Lending. That's the jack of all trades. What, what a rounded out career. Different stuff. <laughs> yeah. I just, He's in man, everything, There's dude. so many <laughs> gaps, but yeah, jack of all trades. You can do whatever you want. He's like, he could get and work in the helicopters if he really wanted to. Like, <laughs> yeah. jack of Benton all trades. Benton and Sin says it best. I've been fired from all types of companies. <laughs> 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 That's what he should have said. Graduated from college. So my best advice to someone is if you really want to get a great job when you're out of college, what do you do? Use the time you're in college to network, uh, to get to know people. If you have, have to kiss fun. professors' asses or whatever, you have to do it. Because that's how you're gonna get a job in the industry you studied for. I didn't do it, I didn't get a good job, and then for a while there I really struggled. Now it kind of flipped on me, but I'm the rare I, I'm the rare case, I'm the you know what? The exception to the rule. So please don't take me as like uh, any kind of an example of how to succeed. Really, college did nothing for me, if you really want my honest opinion. Oh, so. okay. All right, next question. What are the three most... Yeah, I like that. But <laughs> Porsche is from the jackass of all trades. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the better Memorable way moments it. in your life. Losing your virginity doesn't count. And that's from Divine. What was the question? What? Holy shit. Hold on. Wait, wait. You did girl <laughs> questions? Oh, my ears perked up. Interesting question. Hang on. What are the three most memorable moments in your life? Oh, okay. Wait, what is it? Getting late doesn't count? Losing your virginity doesn't count. That's all right, that hasn't happened yet. Okay. So, that, well, can you got give him. me what? Can him. you give? <laughs> what's your guess on this question? You don't have to guess the three or anything, but do you think he's going to give an answer or not? What, what's your take? Let's get Atlas's prediction again. Um, this one could go a lot of ways. Yeah, it's it's three. It's 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 three like biggest. What? I think I'm confused three, again. Three I'm biggest, bi three biggest moments of your life. So I'm gonna say this. Oh. I'm gonna say he won't even answer. He won't even give one. He'll say like, "I've had so many good moments. I don't want to say it." Like that. He'll take that way. Oh, I don't think he'll take miss the opportunity to talk about Evo. No. Um. I think he won't answer. That. I, <laughs> I think he won't give any hmm. of the three. I've had so many cool moments, dude. And he'll go through like four or five, and that's it. That's what I think. That's an answer. What? No, he's not gonna give like. He's going to say, like, instead of giving you three, like, here's my top three. He's going to, like, oh, there's been so oh, I get many what you're awesome saying. Yeah. things. And then name, like, five or six and then be done. That's my take. Okay, yeah. No, that yeah, that's right up his alley. 100%. Yeah, he's not going <laughs> to actually give a top three. He's going to, yeah, exactly. Give, give five multiple. instead, yeah. yeah. That's from Yeah, because there's so many. Uh, yeah, you know what? Losing for my virginity wouldn't count because it really wasn't that big of a deal when I lost it anyway. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yes, he, he was so oh, this cool, guy, dude. dude. He was banging so much. The first time he banged, it wasn't even a big deal, dude. <laughs> it wasn't even a big deal. Okay, cool. Who's, who says these things and, and like, <laughs> he thinks he's passing this off. People are going to believe this. Yeah, They're going to love this, dude. They're going to think it's so proof? cool. Do you need any more proof he was a virgin at this point? You know, like, come on. Come what on. It wasn't even a big deal, dude. It was whatever. Yeah, right. Okay. Most memorable moments Let's hear in your this life, again. I gotta hear it again. Doesn't count. And that's from Divine. Whatever, uh, dude. Yeah. You know what? Losing for my virginity wouldn't count because it really wasn't that big of a deal when I lost it anyway. Oh, um, oh yeah. 
Three most memorable moments A little moments head of my shake life. while he said that. Uh, Get him out of here. <laughs> hell yeah, dude. I would do it all the time, man. And don't keep in mind, this doesn't mean that they're the worst. This doesn't mean that they're the best moments. They're just the most memorable and things I'll probably never forget. That was the question, dumb fuck. probably be the car accident that I was in. Oh, car? Oh, we're getting answers. Oh, my. Wow. Where... And we're talking about the car accident. Uh, which I did a whole episode about car accidents. And let's hear what it has, his, how he explains it here. There's been more than one. Car accident that I was in in senior year of high school where I almost died. To the point where yep. the, I was on the, off the highway and the car door literally impacted to like right here. And if it had gone one more inch, I oh, yeah, he would said that many right times. Now. If you haven't seen that episode, it's right here. For me. Oh, car just, I kind of like took a second look at life and started thinking about life in a different way <laughs> when that happened to me. Yeah. Um, the second most memorable point in my life. He also said many times it wasn't even. Cl he he said it's very close to dying sometimes. That the the severity of that car crash is is very malleable, as you can see in that episode I did on that. But. Would probably be Evolution 2005. When Hell yeah! Out of hey. nowhere, I basically got uh, was the highest ranked Super Turbo player in the country that year. <laughs> I got fourth place. In he said that the way. He said that yeah, in the way. Yeah, he said the thing. <laughs> yeah, he said the thing. <laughs> I was the top-ranked player in the country. <laughs> yeah, you could say he that. Says. Evo was the highest-ranked Super Turbo player in the country that year. I got fourth place at Evo, and the, the, the top three placers in Super Turbo that year were all Japanese players. Uh, okay, at least explain playing the game it. for a long-ass time. I myself was like an up and comer at that time, oh. or I had been playing it for years, mm. but never really succeeded in a tournament atmosphere. Oh. That was just surreal for me. It was the first time I was really on stage in front of a bunch of people. And to be able to go on stage and beat people when I had an entire crowd against me, basically saying, fuck you, Phil, fuck you, DSP, we yep. hate you. You yep. know, you're East Coast, and this is a West Coast centric tournament. So we're going to beat you. Still the whole has time. That to this he's day. still beating people. And it wasn't about East Coast, West Coast at all. Getting to be the top ranked Super Turbo player that year. And persevering through that, I think, was a major moment in my life. And then probably the third most memorable moment would be... <laughs> Gordon Eamon. Is he going to say... Uh, <laughs> is he going to say here getting laid off, I guess? What could we say? Could be what? What do you think we're going here? Because we are getting real answers. I was wrong there. Yeah. Uh, I think it has to be getting laid off. I think we're going there. It would have yeah, to be. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, I, I feel like it's very strange that he's talking about negative things when he's talking about, I guess, memorable. like, you can have most memorable, yeah. but I typically wouldn't think about the negative things right off the bat like he does, but he is DSP, so. Here we go. Me, the day I got laid off back in yeah. September Nice. Nice For call. Reasons, Hell yeah. I mean, was what was it? B. The day I got laid off back in September 2010. September 2010. For many reasons. I mean, it was a downtime in my life. But it, look what it's led to. It's led to me turning my hobby, what I enjoy oh. doing in my free time, into a career, into something that's now supporting me. Oh, I have that. That's letting me pay that, my yeah. bills and letting me go out and have fun with my life. Um, so it really was. It's it's an extremely memorable part of time. That that whole week, basically, when I got laid off and the fan feedback I got, the amazing, overwhelming support, mm -hmm. the roller coaster ride I've been through since then. That would definitely count. Um, awesome. About 7,000 people ask me if I'll be playing the new Mortal Kombat game in tournaments. The yeah, we haven't yes. sipped today. I've just realized. No, yeah, There's a major tournament I'm going to in it's May true. called the Ultimate Fighting Game uh, Tournament, I believe. I forget the full name of it, but that's actually in uh, Chicago. And uh, Keats from SRK is running that tournament, and Mortal Kombat will be there. I'll be playing it in that tournament. And subsequently, if I go to other tournaments, I'll probably enter it there as well. Okay. Subsequently. Oh, God. Last God. question. From the website, then we'll get to a couple quick Twitter questions, and then we'll finish this off because we've okay. got about five minutes left here. Uh, dear Twitter Phil, being close to 30 and having a significant amount of gaming experience, which generation of gaming would you say you enjoyed the most? The bleeps and bloops era. Not only for replayable games, <laughs> but for games that have a lasting impression on you that still make you think about... All right, so he bet he's going to say Super Nintendo. He better say it. I mean, we know that's the answer. Up to this day... I was going to ask what you think his answer is going to be. He's got to be Super Nintendo. He loves Super Nintendo. He's going to say Super Nintendo era and the, you know, Chrono Trigger. Yeah, yeah, Chrono Trigger, yeah. And that's from T-West House. It's a tie. It's a tie for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a tie between SNES era and right now. Here's why I say that. Here's why I say that. Yeah, right now. There are so many games such as Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. Super Mario World. Final Fantasy 4 and Final Fantasy 6, uh, which were called 2 and 3 back then. 
Um, Super uh, Mario World. Chrono Trigger. Yeah. I know I'm naming a lot of role-playing games, but really those were the only games back then with a really significant story. These are the kind of games that hooked you on the gaming genre and you wanted to keep playing. Um, and they led to other things in the future, almost being like the original games with a long enough narrative that you would want to continue the franchise or continue playing. And the reason I say today is because today you have games like Heavy Rain, like Mass Effect. In a fan like, sense. Hell, I'll say Dragon Age 2, games that have these significantly long stories. Yeah, so you, that... you have to have long stories, I guess, to be... To make sequels, you have to have long stories, okay? You not only are playing a game, but you're getting an experience. I feel like I just saw him put, because I watched on stream the other day, like his most disappointing games of of 2011 or something like that. And I feel like he was just shit talking Dragon Age 2 quite a (laughs) bit in that video. Unless I'm misremembering, there was definitely some negative things to be said. Okay, well. Long story. uh, it's a movie type narrative. Movie type or a, narrative. Even like a long book type narrative. Ooh, book type narrative. In a visual package. It's like a long movie type narrative or book type narrative. So you can figure that out. <laughs> you can figure out what that means. <laughs> and I really like where games are going these days. Um, movie type or so book back type. Then in the SNES era, because they were kind of Unlike like magazine type or picture type. <laughs> yeah, no, no. It's like a Chrono Trigger type narrative. A first half, SNES type narrative. Having a narrative that would hook you. Today, because they're expanding upon this, and video games are now becoming so well written, so Ooh. interesting that they're getting noticed by things like the Tribeca Film Festival and being recognized. Oh, we're back to this. Call back. Call back. Okay. Okay. Uh, Twitter questions. We'll do these very quick. Oh, yeah. Hello, DSP. What's Perfect your expectation fire. about LA Noir? That's from Ron Valeri. Uh, my expectation is that it's going to be an extreme, like I just said, an extremely good narrative. A game that's not only a game, but it hooks you for the, the book style or movie style. Story <laughs> that keeps you thinking at every turn, and really, hopefully, because of the quality of the motion capture, the graphical interface, the voice acting, the effort that's being put into this game, I'm actually hoping that LA Noir is a game that pushes video games into the realm of art. I know that's a tall call. I know that's a tall order. <laughs> it's a tall God, call. I... <laughs> It's a tall call. <laughs> Your games into the realm of art. I know that's a tall call. I know that's a tall order. And uh, it might not really live up to the expectations. But right now, from all intents and purposes. Pulling games into art. L.A. Noir. That's that's the job of L.A. Noir. To pull games into art. Yeah. Hell yeah. I, it, I hate this so much. It seems like <laughs> such a strange thing for people to be hung up on. Like, And he's not the... I've heard it for a long time. He's not the only person to be worried or talk about things like that. Yeah. But I, it's just never been something that's concerned me. And I think the whole thing is silly. Yeah, like you I can don't... think whatever the fuck you want is art. It's like, I don't I don't understand the take of like... Caring what he, other well, he does the same thing with that. like... <laughs> Oh, they're going to be, you know, taken as seriously as movies. Like, I don't give a shit if you like, you know, if you think they're on the same scale. I'm going to play them regardless, and I'm going to enjoy them. I don't care care if actors think they're fake. What? I don't think about what kind of, who care what other people decide to think about, especially people that aren't in the real realm of it. I want mainstream people to think it's art. Who cares? Purposes, it's looking pretty good. Okay, it's going to be awesome, dude. Uh, from Big Naz 2009, yeah. ADSP, what do you think of the Gears of War beta, and are you looking towards the full game? The beta so far only has two maps and one game mode, but from what I've played, it is very enjoyable. I think once there's a lot of maps and a variety of game modes, it's going to be very good. Now, a lot of people have said, gee, it looks exactly like Gears of War 1 and 2. Well, you know, there is the old saying, if they ain't broke, don't fix it. And I don't really, I never saw anything wrong with the game engine of those two games. So. Oh, wow. This, I mean, now that's the biggest thing he shits on is if you make a, uh, look at Breath of the fucking Tears of the Kingdom. They did the same game. They didn't innovate. It's buying Breath of the Wild again. <laughs> Damn. He Which is crazy given his, given how he runs his own channel. Because uh-huh. he is very much a, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Oh, but yeah. yeah, exactly. When other people, uh-huh. They can't let that slide. Uh-huh. I think it's going to be a really fun, competitive online game. That'd be awesome, dude. From Chris Ant 7 uh, he says, What do you think about where the gaming industry is headed? With Are 3D and motion controls holding developers back? 
The answer is, it's holding developers back, but you know what? It's probably holding back the developers that don't know what the fuck they're doing anyway. If you really <laughs> think that motion controls and 3D are going to bring us into the next generation, you're wrong. It's going to be games like L.A. Noir that have such an interesting narrative, so much artistic direction that these video games are recognized as a work of art that are going to push us to the next generation. Okay. Not gimmicks like visual gimmicks like 3D or physical gimmicks like motion controls. <laughs> no one buy we do. From Manic MTG, he <laughs> says, Do you think Capcom's decision to release new versions of Street Fighter 4 every single year at this point is hurting the franchise? My answer is yes. Undoubtedly, it is hurting the franchise. There are a lot of people who are getting tired of it. Uh, for... yeah, that was a dumb question, by the way. Good point, T-Link Soldier. Are 3D controls holding developers back? How does that hold developers back? It's a dented question. Great point, but anyway, whatever. He fucking loves L.A. Noir. That's all we fucking know. That's the best game of all time, dude. Capcom right now is basically... Right it's funny you say that because again in in the following year when he was talking about games he said it was a very repetitive and he had oh, to yeah. only put it on as an honorable mention i was pissed because there was games on that list that actually weren't as good and were just much more niche and and la noir got the honorable mention it's fine yeah i was just salty but like look, dude and he's like he has remember remind everybody he hasn't played la noir yet it's not even out yet but he's already decided so much about it about what it is what it's gonna do he hasn't even played Push it, it yet. into art form dude yeah he hasn't even played it yet no one has but this oh man it's got some big expectations coming here popularity with the, the success of the original street fighter 4 and they're just trying to make money it's that simple it's that simple. they're trying to make a buck yeah he didn't even play yet good and friend. It's hurting, or is it hurting them? Yes. But yes. well, as long as they continue to not only put out new versions of Street Fighter 4 every year, but they're making new games such as Marvel 3, such as Tekken versus Street Fighter, then I think it does actually benefit. What was that, a nose adjustment? That was a nose such adjustment as here, dude. Marvel 3, such as Tekken versus Street Fighter. Watch, watch. So we grab it and then we push it up. Look. <laughs> See that? Yeah. I think this is a when he was trying not to snort time. So, like, this is a way to maybe get the juices flowing. He's, yeah, he's massaging the mucus. Manual, yeah. Lean in manual. Oh, my God. Very aggressive on that thing. This is pushing the... It's like, I think it's spreading it to the snort sacks. I think he's engorging the snort sacks. This is rare to see, but you can see it sometimes if you if you analyze the animal enough. It does actually benefit us. Uh, to keep paying them. Well, just like in real years. life, you can use a manual pump or you can use an air pump. Uh -huh. And that's that's kind of what's going yeah. on here. This is what he didn't want to use the air pump too much. He was trying to keep it quiet <laughs> for the fans. He still cared a little bit about the viewers. <laughs> ...every year for the DLCs, new characters, new costumes, because at least they're reinvesting the money in the right places. Okay, whatever. I forgot the question. Next question from Johans 22A. What's up, Johan? He says, are you going to do some tutorial videos for Mortal Kombat 9? More than likely, yes, I will. I need to obviously put a lot of time into it to learn the characters and whatnot. But once oh, his tutorial videos, by the way, are the best because they, he does a tutorial. He just plays the characters and like calls it a tutorial, and everyone shits on it on every video, every like website that tries to put up a DSP. Like this is a tutorial DSP did on uh, this characters, but it's just him playing and bitching at the game. It's not a tutorial at all. <laughs> it's like some significant time to invest to learn the game some more. I probably will be doing that. Last... Like, let's just see. Like, okay, let's just see. I was gonna say, I don't, I don't think I've seen this because when it comes to DSP fighting game content, I actively try to avoid. See, a lot of them didn't make it, but let's like, okay, DSP Street Fighter. It would be on there, and I'll search tutorials here. So tutorials. Did we get any? All right, so yeah, here's a here's a, a MVC character tutorials, or let's just do Wesker basics tutorial. All right, here we go. <laughs> uh... And here I am with my uh oh, starting my gaming voice. What's going on everyone? It's DSP and here I am with my uh starting my tutorial series on Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Now we're gonna get into character specifics of some of the characters who I've been playing in particular over the past couple of days since release. And uh, this is just gonna be the basics. I will cover, you know, as much advanced information as I know up to now, but obviously this is all week one information, so yeah, so week one, like, how much can you know? You know, it's like literally the first week. So he just says, like, shit everyone knows. Wesker. Everyone <laughs> online has been playing with Wesker. And from what I've seen, not a lot of people actually understand how to play with him. So oh, new here's information. what we're going to do. We're going to oh, talk a little bit about yeah, him. First of all, what are his normals, brain. Watch out. Uh, his basic chain combos, and what are good strategies Better to do with you. him overall? <laughs> well, 
as you can see, his normals are a series of standing plunges. His heavy attack is actually a double flipping kick, which is similar to some of the acrobatic stuff he did in Resident Evil 5. Whoa. And his special button is a launch. And also he has crouching attacks, which are... Have some pretty good reach, a sweep off for his heavy attack. No, but that's the thing, Mr. Doctor. Like, maybe this is a bad example, but there's a lot of times he's not into the game at all. He's just trying to put it out. He's like, I have to put out a documentary. I mean, a tutorial, so I'll just say shit. But this is a bad, this is not a good example. But I, let, me, let me show you one here, because this one looks like it's making him seem too good. But, like, watch, I'll show you. Here's, like, when event hubs, I was going to make an episode about this, but it's, like, not worth it. Because it's not that much funny stuff, but I can show you guys now. It's a perfect time. Yeah, I remember when we found the... Uh, the uh, yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. this is a Marvel vs. Capcom 3 DSP's basics tutorial, all right? So you think, like, it's whatever. Like, you know, he's putting a thing out. Let's see how the fans take this, all right? Dude. <clears throat> I'll pass. DSP is too much of an arrogant asshole to care, even if I'm not new. You know? I mean, no one likes his shit I'm, <laughs> at all. Yo, that guy. No, Grimjaw <laughs> Jin. He's right there. He's That's the guy. A very He's informative and well-explained guy. Like, some people like it, but, like... <laughs> Highly recommend reading SRK MVC Wiki over watching these. Better info in more detail. I think my dog could explain this game better in a shorter amount of time. He's also a better player. He also eats his own poop. Good job, DSP. <laughs> That's 2011. That's one month after this video. Uh, two months after this video. Two months before this video was made. So. <laughs> I mean, one of the sentences he said was that Wesker has crouching attacks and they have decent range. Like, if you just crouch with the character and attack, you can figure that out. Yeah, like, you, know? you didn't even have to say it. You could just look at the screen. It, it's right there. This is what so, people, like, people that make good tutorials, it takes fucking time. You can't do it on week one, you know? But that's all you did. I'm doing tutorials. I'm helping everybody, do. And you can see, it wasn't just me. Everyone knows his shit. He's such a scrub, but you're sitting here, well, some people stick up for him, of course. But obviously he had fans at this point. Let's not, let's, I mean, 2011, he was, you know, in the height of it. Jamie LP. A fandom. He says, I know it's soon, but do you think that Duke Nukem Forever has the potential to be game of the year? Mm -hmm. To that... I get the answer. I think any game has potential to be game of the year. It all depends on the execution, the timing, uh, and the dedication and the, of the developing team. Um, Duke Nukem Forever is a big game that's been in development for over a decade. It's definitely going to have enough hype and enough news surrounding it to make sales numbers. Will it be game of the year? I don't know. From everything that I've been seeing, <laughs> people are saying it's a very traditional style FPS game, meaning... Mm -hmm. It's kind of one of those ones traditional style of FPS from the the nineties. Wow, that is not how I would describe that game. Of <laughs> but of course, that's before it came out. Yeah. So. Traditional controls and things. We gotta hear how much he loves Duke Nukem. Like that, and so it, it might not be too innovative in that regard. Uh -huh. However, I think that the comedy aspect of it may be enough to push it over the edge and make it extremely popular. So I guess we're gonna have uh, to see. God, I, yeah, I love when he says the bubble gum, dude. What happened? when the game eventually is released but badass hell like i said I, we're, we're a lot alike me and dude i think right now it's a pretty open <laughs> game. Games like LA, we both talk to people the same exact way noir <laughs> games like a, a whole shit la noir game. can we please stop we we are just on our knees for la noir coming out in the fall that are we like can't stop it. Uncharted great game 3. haven't played it yet <laughs> <laughs> there's so many games coming out still this year any game right now has the potential to be game of the year so any we'll see what happens so all right, I'm All right. DSP. That's it for this episode of Ask the King. It was a long one, but a good one. I hope yes, you enjoyed it. Yes, it was a long one. In two weeks. Yeah, I agree. Uh, tune back <laughs> into the next episode. Remember, you can submit questions on the forum thread and thekingofhate.com in the Ask the King section, or I accept Twitter questions the day of. So, uh, And my Twitter account is they call me DSP if you want to follow. Very interesting there. If anything goes on in my life or I have important things to tell everyone, <laughs> I usually put it up on Twitter and Especially when I go on trips, I put up like a running log of stuff that's going on during the trip. So well, follow me on Twitter. Right that's it. <laughs> See you guys next time. Oh, he edited out the ending there. There's no wow. walk up anymore. Hey, big ups. That's but the editing that's crashing. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing that's crashing this goddamn uh, computer. I don't see many questions we got. We got 22, 21 questions tonight. And we're up to 247. Wow. Can you believe it? I can I can remember about five questions, but uh, we're up to 247 questions now on this Ask the King series. But there you go. All right, business style announcements, Atlas. What you got coming for us in the upcoming week, to be, that is? Yeah, I'm going to try and get the videos like normal again. I've been working like crazy. I almost missed the Saturday morning stream because of work. 
Uh, so know, I'm going to try you, and get you, back at it. Your main stream of day is like the day that's like my least ability to watch, you know, on the weekends because I do operate a household, as you know. It's very Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's the, so that's the exact opposite for me. It's like Saturday morning is like the only time like I'm home uh -huh. alone, just chilling, like just relax. <laughs> that's it. So. But big ups, Atlas. I hope uh, we'll see you again next week, of course. Unless something happens, we'll get to episode number 12 of Ask the King, of course. Big ups for joining the series. It's been a lot of fun. Um, everyone in chat is a legend. Don't ever forget it. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you next time on Tuesday, hopefully for some kind of the Say Don't Play action uh, on WPIG. Uh -huh. But you're all legends. Later, guys. Ba -da -da.